unpainted faces in uniform by the window. This isn't the real me. With that, a hand reaches out and misses the stars grazing off dusk. In the shadow of the school after class lies the remnants of everything someone has lost. Good morning, everyone! Oh? Chief, you look so clean-cut today. You look just like Halara. That is Halara. How could you mistake the two of them? Oh, you're right. What a wonderful surprise. The Chief was gone by the time I got here. It's way past our meeting time. <sighs> what is that old man doing? He always nags others and they're late. The chief suddenly went missing. According to my deduction... His chopped up corpse will be shipped here in a cardboard box! That's horrible! I wonder what happened to Chief Yako. Seeing that the Chief's raincoat isn't here, he must have gone out. The desk drawer is slightly open, and the loose change inside is gone. It wasn't a significant amount of money, just enough to do some shopping. Considering that the refrigerator is empty, he most likely went out to get breakfast. That's correct, Alora. Chief Yako said, he's grabbing breakfast before everyone got together. He asked me to tell everyone, which is why I just did. Why didn't you tell us earlier? Oh, so no chopped up corpse then. You're so perceptive, Halara. With my logic, anything is possible. You are like a real detective. Everyone here is a real detective. That is, well, there is one trainee who wandered in here. Mm. What a jerk. I'm the only one who's allowed to pick on Master. One of these days, I'll get back at that shorty detective. I'll turn him into a wax doll or something. Even if he's a trainee, he's still a detective. We don't discriminate here. What, you're on the rookie side? He's a trainee who doesn't even have a detective deed. No way am I gonna recognize him as a real detective. Right, Vivia? Huh? Oh, there's no need to worry. I ate breakfast before coming over here. You're not even listening. I wonder why the Chief is taking so long. Uh, maybe he's in line at a stall for some meat buns. He's always eating that stuff. It is Kanai Ward's specialty. Adults and children alike seem to love it in the city. 
I have witnessed people line up at the Nippon stalls in both the Kamasagi and Gima districts. <laughs> Everyone looks so gloomy around here because they eat that crap like a bunch of country bumpkins. Hey, rookie, go make something for the chief. You're good at cooking, aren't you? Actually, due to my amnesia, I can't make anything tasty. What? Oh, you're useless, rookie. <laughs> I'm the only one who gets to call Master useless. Jeez, everything about this town is so dark and gloomy. It's making me go insane. I step outside and I get rained on. All I hear are raindrops. There's no good music anywhere. Oh, I know what this town needs isn't truth or justice. It's high quality entertainment. That's where I come in. <laughs> it's time for me to blow some minds with my debut. Debut? I'm a singing, dancing, superstar detective. My beautiful voice will echo throughout this town. I'll show him what true entertainment looks like. I'm just doing this to breathe some life into this gloomy city. Not because I want to pick up chicks or anything. <clears throat> no one asked, and he's already making excuses. Such typical behavior for a liar. Well, that reminds me, I just wrote a new song. I'll grace you all with it right now as a special treat. Oh, come on! You always have the worst timing! <sighs> These morning chases are killing me. Looks like there's something going... What happened, Chief? It's the peacekeepers. They've been trailing me ever since I left. I was running to get them off my tail, but they refused to let up. Oh, that's the most running I've done in a while. Oh, and my back is killing me. So they just trailed you? Why not let them do it? Like I want to go on an early morning date with some peacekeepers? <laughs> not interested. Besides, it'd be one thing if they just wanted to follow me, but there's a chance they'll make an attempt on my life. Just for walking around? There's no way. I don't know about that. It looks like they've gotten serious ever since the Nail Man case. Sorry. We have more stuff to worry about than just Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. I think we should lay low for a while. Well, the WDO never said we had to discover it by a certain date. Let's lurk in the bottom of the river until things settle down. Hey, yeah, that's for the best. Let's go with that. So passive, as usual. While we're hiding, we could lose what we've built here. No, it's not my style to just wait for the opponent to make their move. I'm taking the initiative. Hey, hold on, Halara! Where do you think you're going? There's something I want to look into. There's no need for concern. No matter how many peacekeepers come after me, I'll be fine. I guess that's that. Halara will be fine. I just don't want to get dragged into any trouble. Jeez. Master detectives are all so selfish. We can hear you. Well, good. I hope you all learn some self-restraint. Should I go keep an eye on Halara? Just to make sure no fights break out. You, Fubuki? That'd actually make me more worried. That's a great idea. Yes, Fubuki, please go team up with Halara. Roger that. Off I go. The exit is over here. Are you sure sending Fubuki is a good idea? Despite how she acts, Fubuki has one of the strongest powers of all Master Detectives. 
She'll be great help in times of trouble. The strongest? Is that sheltered skink really that amazing? She sure doesn't look it. Time for us to go to. We need to find some girls that I mean. Clues. I just asked you to show some self-restraint. Oh, don't worry. I'm the ultimate master detective. I won't cause any trouble for you. Are you sure? What? what? I I'm not so weak that I need some rookie worrying about me. My powers make me the best there is in deceiving prying eyes. Not even the peacekeepers stand a chance. Deceiving? Oh, fine. I guess I'll put on a special show just for you. One minute. Who knows how many days it took God to create the world, but I can change everything in just one minute. Check this out. You went in! What's going on in the bag? Oh, that is terrible! <laughs> Ta-da! Huh? Desuhiko? Wow! You totally look like Chief Yako! What do you think? The perfect disguise, huh? Mastery of disguise is my forte. And your voice, too! I didn't think your disguise would be so good. Really? I think I'm far more handsome than that. My backpack has tons of different tools inside. Using them allows me to disguise as anyone pretty much perfectly. And there you have it. Not only can you change your voice and looks, but your height and build too. I'll have you know that this isn't magic or some cheap copycat ability. This is my disguise. It's a highly refined technique. Disguises don't have to be exactly perfect. Any flaws can be covered by matching the overall impression. In short, I just need to imitate the subject visually and psychologically. It, to be honest, it does put a huge strain on my body though. Hmm, I thought the shorty detective was all talk, but this kid ain't bad. Guess he's not totally useless like you are, Master. So you get it now? With my disguise ability, the peacekeepers will never be on my tail. Anyway, I'm off to pick up some babes. I mean, work the case. <laughs> Ah, Kinma District. There's no shortage of cuties. Hey! Master detectives are all so selfish. The WDO needs to teach them cooperation. Cooperation? I'm sure Halara and Desuhiko are confident working alone. If I want to become a detective, I have to gain the same confidence they have. But, it feels like I'll never get there at this rate. <laughs> What's the matter, Shinigami? You never look so serious. I just realized something. There's so much you can do if you can disguise yourself as anyone! Like, you know, everything! You're thinking about something awful again. Awful? I just have a bit of a mischievous nature is all. How rude! Whoa! You don't respect the rights of a dead god! I feel attacked! Maybe I'll just take off and go haunt someone else. Yeah! 
By the way, Chief Yako, what should I do? Well, we may have to hole up here for a while. So, I'm gonna need you to clean this room. We might as well have it tidied up while we're in here. You want me to clean the room? Isn't that more of a job for a housekeeper rather than a detective? Trust me, this is also part of a detective's duty. I'm counting on you, Yuma. <sighs> Fine. There's another one, Master! I don't think these cigarette butts were here before. Has Chief Yako been secretly smoking? I should confront him about it the next time I see him. Anyway, I didn't expect the peacekeepers to follow us around just for walking outside. Now it's dangerous to go out. Oh, why did I even come here? These missed spots. Oh, sorry. I'm in the way of your cleaning. I don't know about the others, but I agree with hunkering down at the office. Only truly cultured civilizations develop in a way that permits immobility. Hence the phrase, armchair detective. Physical distance traveled is irrelevant to arriving at the truth. Truthfully, outsider interference with the matter at hand can distort the truth in unexpected ways. Right? Right. <sighs> He's still not moving. Vivia must be really lazy. organization really kept such a dangerous book? Dangerous? Excuse you, but it's always detectives who want my power. It's the power to obtain the truth, after all. Although, you need to conquer the mystery labyrinth to get it. So, Shinigami, have you haunted other detectives before me? So, you're the type who gets jealous of ex-boyfriends? I'm not jealous. I'm just curious. Was it a coincidence I found the Book of Death? Or did I want to gain its power? If that was the reason, why didn't I leave some sort of note before losing my memories? Since you're dying to know, I'll tell you all about it, Master. A miracle of the universe that you and I met! A real miracle! You 
and I are bound by fate. So let's nurture our connection for all eternity. Uh, what? Oh, no. What happened, Chief? I was so busy being chased around by the peacekeepers that I forgot to buy food. We won't last half a day in the river like this. Plus, I can't think straight without some food in me. <sighs> I'm getting dizzy from hunger. I'm gonna pass out. That's a bit traumatic. I have no choice. Yuma, I've got a special mission for you. Go and buy some food. This is our most crucial mission since the establishment of the Nocturnal Detective Agency. But isn't it dangerous to go outside? I don't have a way to protect myself, like Halara or Desuhiko. Well, it should be fine. Just do some shopping and come straight back. Please, I need those meat buns they sell in Kamasaki District. Gima District has meat buns too, but the ones in Kamasaki are cheaper and taste way better. Chief, you're so incredibly selfish. I think the timing couldn't be better. Let's get it out of this cramped space. I want to see some fun corpses. I hope someone's gone off and murdered somebody else already. Come on. Everyone only cares about themselves. All right, fine. I'll go and buy some food. But don't blame me if I end up getting dragged into trouble. Nope, can't have that. Keep your head down, all right? <sighs> hmm, I have to get meat buns in Kamasaki District. I hope the peacekeepers don't find me. Bus head is a real tyrant. Why don't we just pretend that trash over there is a neat bun? There's a meat bun stall. There are no customers right now, so I should get this over with. What about your share, Master? Aren't you buying some for yourself? Hmm, I'm a bit hungry, so I should eat too. this since you're such a capable detective in training but there's someone watching you from the shadows huh don't turn around they'll see you're so clumsy stupid amateur filthy human filthy is it the peacekeepers hmm something doesn't feel right guy is sneaking around, kind of restless. A peacekeeper would be much more direct. How are they dressed? Well, they're in a raincoat and their heads covered by the hood. I don't think that's an Amaterasu Corporation uniform. So it's not Amaterasu Corp? Then who? <laughs> Let's find out. How? Listen, Master, I've got an awesome plan. Plan? What plan? I call it Operation Stalker Hunter. Go into a secluded location and catch whoever is tailing you. I'll give you advice along the way, so just relax and enjoy the ride. 
Anyway, let's head to the underground area. Sh sure. Here, be careful. Yeah, thanks, mister. Here's our spot. I'll give you the signal once the stalker is close. And that's when you nab them, master. Sneaking behind you. My name is Kurumi Wendy. I'm from Etheria Academy. Pardon me, but that's a uniform from the World Detective Organization, isn't it? Y yeah, it is. I knew it! Oh, I'm so, so happy right now! I'm talking to a real master detective in the flesh! What's with this little shrimp? Acting all friendly after getting caught. What's her deal? Look at her! Every part of her is as flat as a board. Uh, what? Um, can I shake your hand? You already are. Uh, you're right. S sorry, sorry. But I really am touched. To think a WDO master detective is actually shaking hands with me. Um, but I'm. <sighs> what are you blushing for? Sh Shinigami, what do I say? You're on your own. Watching this airheaded exchange is making me stupider by the minute. We'll fill each other's empty skulls with cotton candy or something. Sorry for snooping behind you. I've always admired detectives. I'm a huge fan of the World Detective Organization. A fan? The WDO has fans? Of course. You eliminate unsolved mysteries. 
You are the greatest of detectives, saving people in need. To me, detectives are champions of justice. Uh huh. Oh, I'm sorry. I got a little carried away. I just happened to catch a glimpse of your uniform. I was shocked to see a master detective. But I couldn't bring myself to talk to you. I got all nervous and unsure of myself. So instead, I started following you, but I ended up acting like a stalker. I'm so sorry. It's all right. It was just a misunderstanding. Still, master detectives really are amazing. I'm fairly confident in my stealth skills, yet you caught me so easily. I didn't do much. Although I'm wearing a WDO uniform, I'm just a... Oh, don't be so modest. So what is a master detective doing in Kanai Ward? Are you investigating something? Oh, yes. It's about the city. The city? I'm searching for Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. Hey, Blabbermouth Detective! You sure you should reveal your mission? I'm not revealing anything. She lives here, right? Maybe she knows something. I figured I should ask while I'm at it. It's just good legwork. Yeah. You think this flat airhead knows anything? Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? Do you mean... That secret research Amaterasu Corporation is conducting? Huh? You know something? Yeah, but it's mostly hearsay. No way! Seriously? Hey, can you tell me about it? Anything will help. Yes, gladly. Anything to help out a master detective. Oh, but... <sighs> What's wrong? This may sound pushy of me, but... In return, I'd like to ask for a favor. A favor? Um, what do you mean? I have a formal request I'd like to make to you, detective. There's something I need to find out, no matter what. What is it? I know master detectives cost a lot of money to hire. It may be presumptuous of me to propose a trade instead, but... Can I offer you this information in place of money? Oh! So she's trying to make a deal with the detective! This cheeky brat totally needs to be boom-killed! I just need you to help me a bit with my investigation. If you decide to take on this job for me, I'll tell you everything I know about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. Including secret research that Amaterasu Corporation is doing in the shadows. Hmm... What should I do? Chief Yako told me to keep my head down. Tell me you're gonna accept a job from Flatty McFlatchest here. She's trying to bargain with you like some big shot, but she's probably got nothing. That may be true, but... I know this is brazen of me, but I really want to know the truth. Will you please hear me out? Please! Uh... uh... Sure. At the very least, I want to hear what you have to say first. Really? Thank you! Hey! What are you thinking? There's no time to waste on this munchkin! We're just going to talk a little. If she really is in trouble, I'd like to help. I don't know if detectives are champions of justice, like she said, but I don't want to ruin her image of us either. You're just a trainee, and you think you represent all detectives? You always rely on others for help when you're in trouble, and you think you represent all detectives? 
You're a closet perv always staring at women's breasts. And you think you represent all detectives? I don't stare that often. <sighs> What's wrong? Are you okay? It's because you're staring at her chest. What kind of power is that? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm fine. I just got a little nervous and my heart rate went up. I haven't felt this nervous since I was chased by those peacekeepers. You were chased by the peacekeepers? Why? It's embarrassing. Not something serious enough to tell you about. So, about my request. It's about a certain incident that happened at my school. What happened? If you don't mind, think you could come to the school with me? It'll be easier to explain if you see it for yourself. It's just ten minutes away on the bus. Is that all right with you? Well, if it's only ten minutes, sure. Let's go. Thank you so much! It's this way! Sheesh! All it takes is a high school girl batting her eyes at you, and you get all carried away. That's not my intention. Besides, remember what you're always telling me? That it's pathetic to flee from a case? I don't want to seem pathetic. To who? That flat-chested uggo? What? I don't think she's ugly at all. <sighs> Whatever! You're on your own! What are you so mad about? I'll have you know that I refuse to use my powers to fulfill your vulgar desires. I don't know what she wants you to do, but you're on your own dealing with it. Fine, no need to tell me twice. I'll take care of it myself. I'm sure you'll be begging for my help in no time. Go ahead and play detective with that flat-chested uggo while you still can. What's your problem? Master Detective? What's wrong? It's this way. Coming! It's just a short bus ride away. Where's your school, Karumi? Over there. The school I attend is on top of the mountain. Huh, so there's a school there. The bus is here. Let's get on. This is your last chance to turn back. That flat-chested uggo is just using you, Master. This is Etheria Academy. It's the only all-girls school in Kanai Ward. An all-girls school? It sure looks nice. I wonder what you mean by that. What I want your help with is something that happened at the school six months ago. Oh. Uh-huh. What kind of incident would take place at a school this pristine? There's no time to hesitate. I know what I have to do.
soon after, her shoes were found on the school's rooftop. The peacekeepers and teachers all decided she'd committed suicide by jumping. But she never would have done that. We'd made plans to watch a movie together on our next day off. If it wasn't suicide, then that means someone made it look that way. Do you have any idea who would do that? Yes. I think the theater club may have something to do with it. The theater club? Aiko was a member. The theater club is very active at our school. We have regular performances with live audiences. Aiko was super popular and had lots of fans. She was overflowing with talent. And yet... Did something happen with the theater club? Competition's fierce in the club. Aiko said everyone's always on edge. They all competed to be the leading role. Aiko was often chosen as the main lead for performances, and she was harassed because of it. Was what she went through hard on her? Please don't misunderstand. Aiko wouldn't commit suicide just because of that. She always told me with bright eyes about being an actress someday. I think someone thought they couldn't be the star as long as Aiko was around, and took her out of the picture. You think she was murdered by someone in the theater club? I... don't want to believe it, but... By the way, was there a suicide note? No. There was no message of any kind left behind. But the peacekeepers declared it a suicide, right? What was their reasoning? Just that her shoes were placed together neatly on the roof. They spoke to a few theater members and called it a day. Huh? That's it? The peacekeepers were eager to remove the body. They said it would rot quickly in the rain. They didn't want to draw too much attention because a lot of families from Amaterasu send their kids to this school. It's obvious they treated it as an ordinary suicide to close the case as quickly as possible. They're trying to make what happened to Aiko disappear. Are the peacekeepers covering up the incident? But if that's the case, then it's more likely that it was a murder. I still don't have enough information, so I can't say anything for sure yet. Please find out the truth about Aiko's death. If you do, I'll give you all the information I have. Everything I know about Kanai Ward. So please, lend me your help. I have to know the truth, no matter what. She's just a high school girl, so I don't expect her to have much crucial information. But after hearing this, I can't ignore her. The Peacekeepers obviously didn't investigate the case at all. I can't allow her friend's death to be swept under the rug. Someone has to take this seriously. If the adults around her won't help her, then at the very least, the detective should. Otherwise, there's no point for detectives to even exist. <sighs> You're really gonna accept this request? Sounds like a waste of time to me. All right, I'll investigate it. Huh? Really? Thank you. Thank you so much. No problem. Oh, lunchtime is almost over. I better get to class. Um, can we meet again here after school? to do the investigation together? Sure, sounds good. Okay, I'll head back to class for now. Oh, I almost forgot about something super important. If you don't mind, could you tell me your name? Oh, I'm Yuma Cocohead. Yuma? Yuma, I'm so happy to have finally met a master detective. Uh, wait! I need to tell you I'm not a master detective! I'm off to class! Aww, 
She totally thinks you're a master detective. Isn't that fraud? It's not fraud. B besides, if I can solve the case, the outcome's the same whether I am one or not. People call that splitting hairs, you know? You really think you can solve anything without the help of yours truly? Besides, this is an all-girl school. How do you plan to investigate anything here? Well... See? You're at a dead end already! Just like your entire life. You aren't gonna accomplish much at this rate. Except maybe making that ugly girl cry so much she gets even uglier. Why are you being so mean? Whatever, just leave me alone. I can do this without your help. <laughs> I'll leave you alone, all right. You're not getting my help here. Uh, I hope you get cursed. She's right. It'll be hard to investigate inside a school. An all-girls school, no less. Even with Kurumi's help, I doubt I'll get permission to conduct an investigation. Plus, the incident was six months ago. There'd be nothing left at the crime scene. Oh, wait! A Halara's forte could help! But then again, even post-cognition can't be used unless we're right at the crime scene. And to get Halara's help, I'd go even further into debt. I can't afford to do that. Hmm, what do I do? Is there anyone else I can ask? That's right! Tetsuhiko's forte! Disguising as a school faculty member would make the investigation easy. You want to sneak into a girl's school? First you were a fraud, now you're a pervert too. I haven't decided to sneak in yet. Who knows, I might get permission. But I should still talk to Desuhiko, even though I don't know if he'll help me out. Hang on. If I was to ask Desuhiko for help, where could he be? Maybe he's moving around the city in disguise. I don't know if I can find him, but maybe I should head back there for now. I remember him saying something about lots of cute girls being in Ginma District, so he might be there. I came all the way back to Ginma District. Where did Desuhiko go? He said he's off to pick up girls. I uh, do legwork. But he mentioned something about cuties. I guess I'll hit the streets and find out if he talked to any women. Attention! Well, might as well give it a go. Where did Desuhiko go? Maybe I should ask around and see if anyone's seen him. You want to sneak into an all-girls? Excuse me, I'd like to ask you something. Did some guy around here hit on you? Yeah. So what? Do you know him or something? He is something like that. I've been trying to find him. Could you describe what he looked like? I wasn't interested, so I don't really remember. I think he was wearing a big red raincoat and blue jeans. After I rejected him, he crossed the street. He's probably hitting on someone else. A red raincoat and blue jeans. Did they have any unusual designs? Hmm. Now that you mention it, the coat had a white line on the back. I see. Thank you. I don't know how else to phrase this, but I think you should choose better friends. R right, I'll think about it.
Excuse me, there's something I'd like to ask you. Did some guy come around here and hit on you? Yeah. Do you know him? Um, yeah, I do. I'm looking for him right now. Do you remember how he was dressed? I think he was wearing black boots. And also... Sorry, I don't remember. If he had any accessories on, I think I would have noticed it. I see. So he wasn't wearing any accessories. Do you know which way he went? I ignored him and he left. I think he went down that alley. Anything else? That's all. Thank you for your help. already. I really hate the rain. Excuse me, did you see a man talking to people around here? Now that you mention it, some guy asked me what kind of men I like. I've been looking for him. Do you remember what he looked like? He was wearing a red coat and... Oh, I think he wore a black turtleneck too. I got him to go away. Then he walked toward the crossing bridge with the metal on his coat clinking. I see. Thank you. If you know him, can you tell him to stop harassing people? Oh, okay. Sure. I might not mind helping you here and there if you came running to me once in a while. Excuse me, but did a man talk to you around here by any chance? The one in a red coat? Yes, he asked me what type of men I'm into. I've been trying to find him. Do you remember any of his features? Hmm. He didn't really leave much of an impression. Wasn't my type. I see. Sorry I couldn't help. Oh! I just remembered something. I told him I like people who can dance, so he said he was going to practice and ran off toward the art gallery. He said he was going to practice dancing? I see. Thank you. Sure thing. Good luck with your search. Something on my face? Is that Desert Eco? Uh, a red raincoat, blue jeans, a white line on the back of the coat. He's practicing dancing. Black boots. Accessories on a black turtleneck, clinking metal on his coat. And that's everything. The investigation's going great. 
Let's think about this some more. <laughs> this dance step is easy. Hmm? What do you want? Is that Tetsuhiko? Um, Tetsuhiko? Huh? The Tetsuhiko, you say? Did I get the wrong person? Damn, the rookie. Of all people, saw through my disguise. Thank goodness, it was Desuhiko after all. What do you want from me, rookie? Don't tell me you're dragging me back to the agency. Oh, you can't restrain me. I am the champion of freedom. You want to tell me what to do? <laughs> You're on. Just try and make me. That's not why I'm here. I, I mean, there's something I need your help with. Huh? Help? With what? Well... Hmm... Hmm... So, what do you think? Would it be too difficult? Great job, rookie! That's awesome! Huh? <laughs> An all-girl school, huh? Just hearing that divine phrase can purify my soul, transforming me into a saint. Alright, I'll gladly help you out. I, the Superstar Detective, am at your service. Huh? You'll really help? Oh, come on, we're pals, aren't we? <laughs> oh, man, let's talk like the old buddies we are. Uh-huh. Anyway, there's still time before class is out. Alright, let's go eat. My treat? No way! I mean, are you sure? Don't be shy! Just follow me, rookie! So, uh, what does the girls' school smell like? Ah, uh, tell me, man. This guy's ulterior motives aren't so ulterior. Gross! I wish all humans would just die. Now that I've found Desuhiko, all that's left is to head for Etheria Academy. Once we enter the school, we'll be there for a while. I'd better wrap up any other business I have now. <laughs> Yuma, you really came! I was nervous throughout my classes, thinking you might have stood me up. I wouldn't ditch you like that. I'll see the job you requested of me to the very end. I knew I could count on a master detective. Um, about that... Listen, the truth is... Wait, Yuma... Something's wrong. 
There's a suspicious person over there. Oh, that's my senior. Or a friend, I guess. Huh? Is he also a master detective? He's not what I expected. Why is he staring at the other students? Um, he's preparing to use his forte, I think. Huh? Oh, what's up? Are you talking about me? You must be Kurumi. I heard all about you from Yuma. I'm the superstar detective Desuhiko Thunderbolt. Woo! <laughs> nice to meet you. Sure. Now about the details of the job. If possible, I'd like to see where it happened in person. Do you think we can get inside? So you're starting the investigation. It may be hard for an outsider to get in the school. Even family members can't enter without a teacher's permission. Wow, looks like you're in trouble already. But I've come fully prepared to save my lost little kittens. Just watch. <laughs> you come too. Me too? Huh? Don't worry about it. Just let me handle it. I'll be gentle. <laughs> Teacher? <laughs> it's me, Superstar Detective Desuhiko. Huh? So the cute girl next to you is Yuma? Huh. Why me? Are you really the same people? You didn't just switch out with someone? Kurumi, if someone talks to you on your way home, don't follow them, okay? <gasps> just kidding. This is my forte, disguise. I seared the image of this lady teacher into my mind as I passed her by earlier. That's amazing! So this is the forte of a master detective! Isn't my voice just irresistible? <laughs> I'll let you be my fan. If you join the after party, I'll even whisper in your ear if you want. Yuma, you're so cute! Now we'll just look like friends when we're together. Uh, yeah. Hey! Get away from me! I don't want some flat-chested uggo as a friend! We should be good now. Let's go inside. Yeah, like an undercover investigation. Be sure to go straight home. Okay! I go jumped off the roof of this school building. Why don't we go up there to look? How about we visit the theater club first? We're about to do a rehearsal on the school stage right now. This school even has its own theater, huh? That's right. If we go there, you can see what it's like at the club I go attended. Let's take a look while we still can. You take care of that. I'll go check another spot. Another spot? You're not coming with us? I stand out when I carry the backpack. I need to hide it someplace safe first. Don't worry about me and, uh, do what you gotta do. <laughs> I've set up your shot so you better not miss. See you later, my man. I think he's misunderstanding something. Is it really okay for him to go off on zone? Let's go, Yuma. 
Wait, do you have a girl name now? Y you must find. It's very proper, like a real theater. Right? The whole school gives a lot of attention to the theater club. There are four performances throughout the year, and people outside of the school sometimes come to watch. Kane Ward doesn't have many options for entertainment, so our school's theater is very popular. That's why the battle to be the main lead is so intense. The star of the theater club becomes the star of Kane Ward. So it's seen as much more than a club activity. Yes, this isn't just a single page of our youth. Everyone's competing as if their lives depend on it. A lot of them come from affluent or powerful families and take pride in being members of the elite. Sounds like everyone's always on edge. They're very graceful and don't show their true feelings while on stage, though. Shall we go in? Everyone's so busy, they didn't even notice us coming in without permission. This is the stage rehearsal, after all. It's treated like the main performance itself. They leave the curtains open and allow people to watch. More students should show up to watch shortly. I'm not used to this atmosphere. It makes me nervous. <laughs> Why are you getting nervous when you won't even be on stage? We're only here to find out the truth behind Aiko's death. Let's search carefully... Wait, that's no way to talk to a master detective! Sorry, I'm starting to talk to you like any other friend. It's alright. It helps me blend in. Huh? So it's alright to be friendlier? I'll go all out if you don't mind. Sure. <sighs> I wish you were dead. I wish you'd die in a lake with your feet sticking out. Oh, Yuma. All four of them are here together right now. All four? What do you mean? The four members of the theater club that I think have something to do with Aiko's death. See? They're on stage right now. The two in costumes are the main leads this time. The blonde, high-class-looking girl on the right is Karen. The impish-looking one on the left is the other protagonist, Waruna. Below the stage is the honor student, Yoshiko. The one keeping a low profile in the Windbreaker is Kurame. You think those four are suspicious? Why? Of my reasons. Look at Cotton, the classy one. Her beauty is unbelievable for a high schooler. The moment Aiko was gone, she had no problem climbing to the top. 
She has a strong fervor for acting, and seems to have no interest in making friends with others. I suppose you could say she's the uncooperative type who only thinks about herself. Her father has a lot of influence in real estate, so he applies lots of pressure too. So you think that's why she took down Aiko to become the main lead? I hate to say it, but I think it's possible. It's true that this Karen does have an extraordinary grace to her. But I think that dour look on her face reveals her inner thoughts. Am I really walking down the right path? Did I wind up somewhere I'm not meant to be? I can almost hear her thinking that. In some ways, she's a lot like me. Huh? How are you alike? You sure don't look classy yourself. I'll ignore that. The other lead, Waruna, is the kind that only does what she wants on her own terms. But she can play any role like she's a true genius. She's still rough around the edges according to critics, but she doesn't seem to care about what others think of her. Why do you suspect her? She's the kind who doesn't hold back when it comes to getting what she wants and doesn't care what anyone thinks. As you can imagine, she's always butting heads with someone. Laruna would never admit defeat, ever. That's why everyone else is afraid of her. And she only talks to a few girls who follow her around. If someone with that kind of pushy personality got into an argument with Aiko... You're saying it's not out of character for her to take more drastic measures. Yes. It's a bit of a stretch, but considering how she did become one of the main leads... She could be considered suspicious. Yoshiko below the stage. She's an actress, but she's managing the stagehands as production assistant this time. Everyone is talking about how Karen will be the next big star. But within the theater club, Yoshiko is more popular by an overwhelming degree. She prioritizes the team over the individual. She's a kind, mild-mannered honor student. The only reason the theater club is able to function is thanks to her leadership. And you think someone like her could have killed Aiko? I don't personally suspect her that much, but... Aiko used to be the club's leader. After she died, Yoshiko picked up right where she left off. I believe she's the only one who could ever take over Aiko's role. So Yoshiko maybe felt Aiko had what she thought was rightfully hers. But would she resort to murder to change that? I don't want to believe she would, but I can't say it's impossible. Kurane, the one in the wings wearing the Windbreaker, manages the light since she wasn't chosen for a lead role. But when it comes to pure acting ability, she's one of the best. I guess you could say her acting method is distinct, like, she's the only one who can do what she does. She's kind of gloomy. Or, it's more like no one really knows what she's thinking. She's often alone in class, too. Do you think she's also a suspect? She always aims for the lead role. Besides, who knows what she's thinking? So you're saying maybe she actually despised Aiko and tried to take out her competition? Maybe. It's why I consider her another suspect. I see. All right then. The main leads are Karen and Waruna. There's also Yoshiko, the group leader, and Kurane, the distinctive one. And in your eyes, Kurumi, you find them all suspicious? I'm sure they'd be mad if they heard me, but yes. I do. Though the four of them are rivals, they weren't particularly hostile to each other before. However, after Aiko passed away, 
they started fighting for the main role. They all rarely speak to each other now. That's intense. It's true that it does seem suspicious. So, did you gather all that information yourself, Kurumi? To tell you the truth, I joined the theater club after Aiko's death in hopes of finding out what really happened. You're really determined, huh? I am. I won't give up until I discover the truth behind Aiko's death. She must have been devastated by the loss of her friend. But she still found a way to push herself forward. All this to find the truth. I see. Sometimes the truth can be a goal that helps you press onward. Then I need to do what I can to help her. I have to find the truth behind this case. On the other hand, some truths make you want to die when you discover them. Be quiet. Besides, even if that were the case, if I let the truth be buried like this, more bad things could happen. That's why I'm going to help her find the truth. It's my duty as a detective. Will you stop confusing detectives with heroes? Regardless, I have nothing to do with this, so whatever. For someone who has nothing to do with it, you sure have some strong opinions. <laughs> hey, Kurumi! You came at the right time! We're short-handed right now. We could use some help in the wings. You mind lending a hand? Huh? But I'm... Oh, don't mind me. I'll watch the stage from here. I'll go help. Let's meet back here once I'm done. Who's the cutie? A classmate? We... yeah. Something like that. Where have you been hiding such a cute girl? Why don't you invite her to the theater club? R right. <laughs> Looks like it's about to begin. She said this would be just like the actual performance. I wonder what it's like. Hello, everyone! Thank you for coming by after school when everything's so busy. Desirico? What is he doing? Before the theater club starts their performance, there's something I want everyone to hear. It's my debut song! I've practiced so much for this big day! Here it goes! Give me the spotlight! Hey! Ugh, he's so dumb. Now, we will begin the Theory Academy's Theater Club rehearsal performance. Why would you do that, Desuhiko? What if they see through your disguise? Oh, come on, man. What's wrong with a little fun? A star always wants to stand on stage. You're kidding me. Even if your disguise is perfect, that was reckless of you. Oh, it's fine to be reckless and my disguise is perfect. Damn, I ruined my chance for an amazing debut. Anyway, the performance is about to start. I knew I would find you here, Natasha. I knew you would come, Anatoly. You have not changed at all in the past ten years. Nay, you have become even more beautiful. You, however, have changed. Your face is scarred and... You look stern. I've longed for the days we spent here together. Back then, the world...
world shone bright in the colors of the rainbow. But now, the only world I see is colored with crimson, draped in the blood of my fallen comrades. Behold, even my own hands are stained red. Yet, you are still pure, unchanged from that day. You really believe I have not changed? In truth, I had no choice in the matter. But because I did change, I chose to remain as I once was. I see. These ten years twere long for us both indeed. Within the tall, white walls, a clear fountain and colorful flowers decorated the garden. This garden was the world to these two young girls. They held hands and ran through the sunflower field. They sang to the blue sky and wore white clover crowns they had given one another. The sunset was ever golden. Even the rare rain glittered brightly. The world was perfect. Everything shone like the shimmer in a rainbow. At the very least, that was how it was within these walls. The two sisters, Anatoly and Natasha, were princesses of a 300-year-old kingdom to the far west. Since birth, they had never gone beyond the castle walls. Their youths were spent together alone. Sisters by birth, they had a happy life together. But one day, their peace abruptly ended. A rebellion struck. The military took the castle and declared the start of a new nation. Royal family members who resisted were executed and their corpses hung in the garden. The castle walls were destroyed and the flowers trampled. Anatoly and Natasha escaped the castle at night thanks to their servants. But amidst the chaos, the two sisters were separated. Their hands brushed against each other. It would be the final time they ever touched. Natasha was hidden in a neighboring small nation. An ally of old, the princess was welcomed with the highest honor. However, Anatoly continued her journey of escape with the remaining members of the royal family. They traveled the frontier to avoid pursuers as they searched for a land of peace. As they continued down this path, their comrades fell one after another. Ten years have passed since. Their performance is so intense in person, I can't take my eyes off the stage. Oh. Oh. Was that Yoshiko? Maybe she went to the restroom. I took up the sword for the first time after I left the castle. It was also the first time I killed. Have you ever witnessed a soldier's dying moments? As blood flows from open wounds, all you'll hear is a death rattle. Men speak proudly of honor and pride, but those vanish when you're on the battlefield! Over the span of ten years, Natasha was welcomed as the new head of state for a small neighboring nation. She knew full well that her lineage was being taken advantage of for the nation's development. However, she had no choice but to allow this to happen. Meanwhile, Anatoly traveled the land. She had grown to become a leader of the wandering warrior tribes in the region. 
the sword she had mastered to survive had become the hope for many. The fight to regain their homeland had begun for these two princesses. It all began when the former kingdom, now a military dictatorship, invaded the nation protecting Natasha. Natasha declared war, promising to regain control of her former castle. Seeing an opportunity, Anatoly rallied the people of the land to mount an invasion. They rode for the kingdom. At first, Natasha was disadvantaged, but the balance shifted upon uniting with Anatoly's forces. The enemy commanders saw the forces surrounding the castle. They knew there was no way to escape and quickly surrendered. The war ended in a single day. And yet, people do not know of the 10 years of strife these two girls endured. The royal family was rebuilt, but the peace they had once known was not immediately restored. Natasha's forces desired control over the conquered kingdom. However, Anatoly's camp also sought control, having achieved many merits in battle. Though the two girls reached out to one another, their hands would never touch again. They were fated to strike each other down. If we continue to fight, more blood will be spilled, weakening our nation. Hence why only one of us shall be queen and end this war. There is no path before us where we can walk hand in hand as we did back then. I know. I am prepared for what we must do. It's why I've waited here for you. Draw your sword. We shall now decide who is fit to become queen. Drop the facade, Natasha. For these past ten years, you sat on the throne as a princess. I know you know not how to wield a sword. I refuse to stain my hands with your blood. I could never will myself to kill you. But at this rate, the nation will perish. Draw your sword, Anatoly! Natasha! asleep the whole time, so it was already dark anyway. Is she talking in her sleep? That was weird. Wait, why am I wasting time thinking about it? The lights are on again. Back to the show. Now, let us eat. Yes, allow me to pass the plate. Thank you, Anatoly. The two spent time together again, for the first time in years. However, they could not run through the garden like they used to. Together, they carried the lives of tens of thousands on their shoulders. What was expected of the girls was no longer a crown of flowers, but a real crown instead. If I could simply defer the throne to you and end it all, I would have done so in the beginning. A queen's crown would fit you better, Natasha. However, the war would not simply end there. How did it end up this way? What are we supposed to do? 
Natasha wept in anguish as Anatoly gently embraced her. How wonderful it would be if we could flee somewhere together. But both knew full well that could not be. After a long silence and much internal strife, Natasha rose. She knew this could not go on forever, for the nation and for themselves. She invoked her nation's ancient tradition. A new queen would be chosen through a duel of cups and poison. Let us end this, Anatoly. Natasha, what do you intend to do? I leave it for the heavens to decide who will survive. On the day we were separated, I was given this poison by our family in order to commit suicide. Switch the glasses around, until I cannot tell which one has the poison in it. Once you are finished, I will reorder the glasses as well. The Duel of Poisoned Cups. Very well. We shall ask God which of us deserves to survive. Though perhaps it will be the God of Death that answers. Finished. It is my turn then. I am ready. I grant you the right to select a glass. I shall take the remaining one. Very well. Natasha, promise me. If you survive, promise you will bring peace to this kingdom. And be a bit more selfish in your personal life. That would balance things out, I think. I also have something to say, Anatoly. If you survive, wear a dress fit for a queen, no matter how much you hate it. To the new queen. Cheers. Huh? Cut it!
Sheen! Huh? What? Sheen? But... Marna, are you all right? <gasps> yeah! wrong what do i do what do i do S somebody call for a teacher please report it to the peacekeepers our theater for rehearsal performance is hereby canceled i repeat What's going on? Oh, a crime! What, what happened? Is this part of the show? No, I don't think so. I think this is real. Then... That's a real corpse on the stage? Tetsuhiko, this is where master detectives come in. We have to do something! Oh, no, 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 no. I can't deal with corpses. Huh? Dead people's faces terrify me. I can't handle looking at them. And the blood. What's with the blood? It's a way too horrifying. To... I can't deal with gory stuff. You're joking, right? You're a master detective. I'm not assigned to murders. I mainly handle undercover investigations and stuff like that. So, yeah, I'll leave this to you. I grant you the right to investigate the crime scene, rookie. <laughs> what? I, 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 I'll use my uh, disguise ability and try to leave the panicking students out of here. I'll leave the rest to you. wasn't an act just now, right? That's not in the script. Odin really coughed up blood. She, she's really dead. Who could have thought a real murder would happen during a play? First Aiko, and now Cotton? Is the school cursed? Yuma, it's a murder case. But if the peacekeepers come, they'll just cover it up again. Please, I need your help. Please investigate this case, Yuma. You want me to do it? Uh, got it. You're just doing what she says again? Wow, if you want to get on the flat-chested Pucko's good side that badly... Hey, you also want to peek at the crime scene for your own reasons. Mm, busted. Anyway, it'll be trouble when the peacekeepers arrive. Let's search the crime scene before they get here. jobs in the wings. Aside from the theater club members, there wasn't anyone wandering about like an outsider. I mean, other than when Desuhiko jumped in right at the beginning of the play. Oh, yeah. Sorry about that. Well, that's part of the investigation, right? You can't see everyone from the stage after all. Isn't that why he went up there? So he could memorize all the faces that were there? Right. I think he just wanted attention. But setting that aside... 
Since she didn't see any outsiders, the only persons of interest are those within the theater club. I'll keep that in mind while taking a look around. I've done a few investigations already. I should be able to handle this now. Yet you were hopelessly reliant on yours truly until now. I see it's not your brain making the decisions anymore. <laughs> The eyes are wide open from agony, and the body is completely motionless. I can immediately tell she's dead. Though she displayed many expressions while acting, her face is frozen in death in the end. This isn't an act. She was struck by an abrupt and unscripted death. Um, was it poison? That's most likely the case. There are no external injuries, and given the circumstances, she must have ingested poison. This will be tough to solve if that's the case. I know nothing about poison. What? A detective who doesn't know his poisons? Don't tell me you're a poison virgin! Ew, gross! You perverted little detective. Get on your knees and apologize, and maybe I'll teach you a thing or two. How about something like, I'm sorry, I should know my place. I can't live without you, Shinigami. If she was murdered with poison while on stage, the poison must have been prepared somewhere else. I need to look for that while checking out anywhere else that seems suspicious. Yep, it's a corpse. Not only is Aiko gone, but now Kaden too. Could this also be a fight for the lead role? If so, those most suspicious are Kaden's rivals. Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurane. Is the culprit one of those three? I need to find out if there was anything suspicious about them during the performance. Kurumi was in the wings the whole time, so perhaps she knows something about the others. Before the performance, did you notice anything off about Kaden? Well, I think she was more on edge than usual. She yelled at underclassmen who were late in preparing for the show. She also paced around restlessly. That's not just today. She's been that way since Echo's death. Maybe the whole battle for the lead role had stressed her out. But since she was murdered after Echo, she should be considered another victim, right? If she knew someone was out to get her, and it's not strange for her to be mentally unstable. What about Kurine? Did she seem strange before the incident occurred? Hmm... I haven't seen Kurine. She was working up above the whole time. Above? Oh, she was managing the lights then. There's a catwalk above to adjust the lights, and that's where Kurane was supposed to be. So I didn't see her in the wings. There's another girl handling the lights, so it would be helpful to speak to her. Kurumi, did you notice anything suspicious about Warana while you were watching from the wings? Hmm... As far as I can tell, Warana was just her usual self. She was listening to music right up to the start of the play. I think that's how she concentrates. 
Did she go near the glasses or bottle before the performance? I wasn't watching her the entire time, but if she did go near the set, I think I would have noticed. Hmm, I see. Warana was the closest to the victim. That's ample opportunity to commit the crime. But still, how did she add the poison? It couldn't have been during the performance, right? Wait, now that I think about it... Right after the lights went dark in that one scene, she went near the shelf to pick up a plate. Her back was toward the audience, so I couldn't see her hands. But she only had two or three seconds max. Could she have poured hidden poison in the glass in that time? Did she have any other opportunities after? The next time she touched the glasses was during the shuffling scene. But it was Cotton who moved the glasses and bottle. She also prepared the poison vial. And plus, after shuffling, Cotton was the one who chose the first glass. Given the situation, it'd be difficult for Warna to poison Cotton specifically. Before the incident occurred, do you know where Yoshiko was and what she was doing? I didn't see Yoshiko on the wings. She may have been watching from the audience. Oh, right. Speaking of which... During the performance, I noticed Yoshiko walking down the aisle. I thought she was coming back from the restroom. But I didn't see her take her seat. What if she wasn't part of the audience? Where could she have been? The ones fighting for the lead role are Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurame. None of them seem particularly suspicious so far. Hey, how long are you gonna keep this up? I'm so over playing 20 questions with this ugly chick. That reminds me, the lights went dark during the performance, right? The entire hall was blacked out. Wouldn't it be possible for someone to sneak up on stage and place the poison then? Oh, I hadn't thought of that, but I don't think it's possible. Why not? The blackout lasted for only five seconds. We measure it each time to ensure there are no mistakes. So someone would have to move through the dark get on stage, apply the poison, and get away, all in five seconds. That sounds impossible to me. If they were in a hurry, their footsteps would have been heard by everyone, too. From the audience, it may be impossible, but what about from the wings? No, there were multiple club members, including me, in the wings at all times. While the lights are out, we are always on standby to support the actors. If someone went on stage, the other members and I would have noticed. I guess it's not possible then. <laughs> Even an amateur has more logic than you. I guess you're useless without a certain someone. glasses on the table. The props used for the duel of poisoned cups. I think this glass was supposed to be stored upside down on the shelf in the back. Cotton was the victim, but she's also the one who set it on the table. Maybe poison was already applied to the glass beforehand. Hey, do you know who prepared these glasses? Oh, it's the girls on prop duty. The freshmen are handling them this time. Do you know where this glass was before it was placed on stage? Props are kept in the theater club storage. This glass should have been in there too. The theater club storage? In that case, any club member would have access. Um... 
Was real poison applied to the glass? I just thought it could be possible. But there's the risk of being caught by applying the poison after it was moved to the set. If poison was applied, it would have been before being brought to the set. But on days like this, when there's an open rehearsal, props are brought out of storage right after school. The glass should have stayed on that shelf the whole time. After school... Which means it'd be even harder to apply poison before then. Yes. At the very least, the props in the set were fully prepared at least one hour before the performance. There's a wine bottle on the table. Karin poured the liquid from this bottle and started to suffer after drinking it. Then that means there's a chance the poison was mixed into this bottle. This isn't wine in here, right? Of course not. It's just grape juice. I poured out the bottle and replaced what was inside. Huh? You, Kurumi? After class, I was asked to help out before I went to get you. I'm still a theater club member, after all. Were both the wine and grape juice sealed before you swapped them out? Yes. I received the unopened wine bottle from a club member. I uncorked the bottle and poured the wine down the sink. It's a waste, but we can't drink it anyway. After that, I went to the cafeteria and bought a can of grape juice. Of course, this was also unopened. I poured the juice into the bottle, then put the cork back. I passed the bottle to a club member, and my job was done. That bottle was then placed with the glasses on the shelf before the performance. I see. With so many people around, poison couldn't be added to the bottle after it was placed on stage. If poison was mixed in, it'd be before it was brought on stage. This file is supposed to have poison in it, according to the script. But it's empty now. It's dry and shows no signs of ever being wet. To be sure, the poison in this file wasn't real, and it was just another prop, right? Absolutely. It was always empty. The contents spill easily because of the loose lid, so we don't even keep colored water in it. Karin just pretended to pour poison from the vial into the glass on stage. Then it's hard to imagine there being any poison inside it. that the catwalk for adjusting the lights is up above. Are those the stairs to reach them? Would you like to go check up there? Yeah, I would. The spotlights for the stage are set over there. It's a lot narrower than I thought. It's pretty high up. Yeah. It'd be hard on anyone with the fear of heights. So you can move the lights as needed for the play. The table is directly below, which means... You can't see the glasses getting shuffled from the audience seats, but they could have been visible from up here. I could find out for sure if I could talk to someone that was up here. Gentry, so these don't suit my palate. Hi, 
I don't think there's anything on this side. There's a script on the floor. That's a script of the play. Someone must have dropped it in all the chaos. The script describes the duel of poisoned cup scene. The character Natasha, played by Cotton, is supposed to take the wine and glasses from the shelf. After that, the glasses are shuffled on stage. According to the script... After that, Cotton takes the first glass, and they both drink at the same time. Unfortunately, Cotton's glass turned out to actually be poisoned. Kurumi, I was wondering about this script. It says, make sure the audience cannot see the glasses. Why is that? It's to make the result feel unpredictable to the audience. If the glasses are visible, no matter how fast they are shuffled, the audience can see which one has the poison. The script doesn't say anything about how many times to shuffle the glasses, or which one will have the poison in it. Exactly. There's no poison to begin with, so it doesn't matter which one's picked. You just pick any glass and act out your death after drinking. In the script, Cotton was to die. I didn't think she'd actually die. I see. Since the instructions aren't precise, both actresses don't know the results from shuffling either. I've checked all that I can for now. I have a good idea of how things work around here. It seems certain Cotton died from drinking poison, but I couldn't find any clues that point to how it was done. Oh, stuck already, Mr. Pervert Detective? If you need my adorable angel's whisper to help, maybe you should get on your knees and beg. What angel? You're a death god. <sighs> I shouldn't even pay attention to her. But she's right. I'm stuck. What should I do? Yuma, if you're done with the crime scene investigation, are you conducting the questioning next? Questioning? Aren't you going to talk to Yoshiko, Waruna, Kurene, and the others? Oh, right. Let's go and talk to them. <laughs> She's such a loudmouth. But how do we talk to them? I doubt they'll be too willing to share anything with me. I joined the club only recently, so they don't trust me. And you're a complete outsider, Yuma. Even though you're disguised as a cute girl right now. That's it! A disguise! Maybe this could work if we use Desuhiko's disguise. He could disguise as any of the girls and start questioning them. Ah, the peacekeepers? Aw, they're here already. That woman, she was the one with that Yomi guy. I am the Amaterasu Peacekeeper's Vice Director, the trusted right hand, showered with love by Director Yomi himself. Martina Electro. Uh, uh, uh. Goodness me, you've surely done something reckless this time around. Whoops, looks like she found out you snuck into a girl's school. I think this deserves the death penalty, don't you? Um, there's a reason why I'm dressed this way. What are you doing? 
hurry up and make the arrest. Wait, I can explain! Huh? What? You have no right to remain silent. You have no right to talk to a lawyer, either. You only possess two rights. Confess the truth, and beg Amaterasu Corporation for mercy. Take her away. Hey! What's going on? Um, please, wait! Are you sure you want to try and stop Amaterasu Peacekeeper Vice Director Martina? Yeah, tell me, why are you taking Kurumi? To arrest her, naturally. On the suspicion of murdering Karen. Huh? What? Why would I do that? We have reached this conclusion following an interrogation with a person of interest. According to them, you were responsible for handling the contents of the wine bottle prior to the start of play. It's clear you took the opportunity to pour poison inside it. It was only grape juice! I didn't add any poison! Besides, where would she even get poison from? Ms. Martina, this was discovered in the chemistry lab. <laughs> oh, it appears my deduction was correct. The poison was right under our noses. Hmm. It seems to have been a particularly potent one. The label warns that even a small amount ingested can result in death. The bottle is unsealed and some of the liquid is missing. There's no mistake. You secretly stole this from the chemistry lab and used it for murder, didn't you? That bottle is way too big to be stolen without anyone noticing. What a worthless comment. One could simply unseal it in the chemistry lab and put the substance in a smaller container to take wherever desired. Which could then be directly poured into the wine bottle. If you're gonna pick a fight, you better have sound logic backing you up. This is the last time I'll do this for you. Hmm, there's a warning on the bottle. This chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. Huh? After 30 minutes, it becomes harmless? If you think that's important, go for broke and try pointing it out. Um, I'm curious about what's written on the bottle's warning label. Warning label? This chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. It has been 30 minutes since the murder occurred. If this chemical was unsealed at the time of the crime, it will have already lost its potency. Let us check. Nothing. It seems likely that this poison was used as the murder weapon. Which means the crime was possible only for someone at the school with access to the chemistry lab. However, this fact does not contradict her being the killer. Wait, no! I am well aware that many of Etheria Academy's students are children of those affiliated with Amaterasu Corporation. However, that cannot be used as an excuse to bend the truth. Criminals must be punished as criminals. <laughs> For that is justice. Now be gone. Any additional interference and you'll be arrested as well. Take her away, and dispose of the corpse on stage before it rots. Corpses spoil so quickly due to the rain and humidity in this town. Why? There must be a mistake!
Mike! It wasn't me! That's right, she's not the killer! Please, listen to me! I warned you not to interfere any further. She swapped out the contents of the bottle before the play began. And the incident occurred more than 30 minutes into the play. If the chemical use in the crime becomes harmless after 30 minutes, then it's impossible for her to be the culprit. I see. How logical and beautiful. There is beauty in being logical with all things, much like the golden ratio. Like gazing upon a flawless art piece, and the more delicate it appears, the more excited I become envisioning the moment I pulverize it! Huh? Logic is meaningless in the face of ultimate power! It is nothing but a glass ornament beneath an iron hammer! Ah! Uh, no! I... I'm so excited! What's with her? I guess all the Peacekeeper higher-ups are perverts without exception. No. My soft and fragile-looking student, your play-acting as a detective is over. Play-acting? If you intend to continue interfering with our justice, then you will be pulverized. Help me, Yuma! Hmm? Yuma? I've heard that name somewhere. No, never mind. I don't know a little girl like you. Play acting as a detective? She's right. What am I doing? I've mistaken detectives for superheroes. Justice is a matter of opinion. With enough conviction, anything can be considered justice. It's only an assumption. Completely worthless and completely powerless. Hey, I told you all students must wait on the lower level. Stop wandering around and go join the others. <sighs> Kurumi was taken away. What should I do? Do I just walk away as if nothing happened? No, I can't do that. Kurumi believed in me. She said the detectives are heroes. I'm no hero, but I'm the only one who can save her right now. I have to do something. <laughs> The truth is still hidden. To discover the truth behind this case, and to find out who the real killer is... I need Desuhiko's help. I need his disguise ability to get information from the club members. Oh! You're that cutie who was with Kurumi! What are you doing here? If you don't go underground, they'll be mad at you. It, yeah. I was called for questioning, but now I'm heading back. Let's go together. Oh, it's fine. I'll be right there, so go on ahead without me. You sure? Well, I was curious. Are all the other theater club members also underground? Like Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurune, too? Yeah, that's right. Yoshiko is feeling pretty shocked right now. She's in the rest area because she wants to be alone. Waruna is with her usual friend group in the makeup room. As for Kurune, maybe she's in the staff room with the other club members. Ah, uh, got it. Thanks. I'll be going now. Um, teacher? 
I'm sorry. My student is distressed. So please excuse us for a moment. You okay, Yuma? I'm fine, but Kurumi got caught by the peacekeepers. Are you serious? What are you gonna do? Desuhiko, can you lend me a hand investigating this case? Don't tell me you want to keep investigating behind the peacekeepers' backs. I know it's reckless. The chief even told me not to, but this is something I have to do. You gotta save the woman you love, right? I totally get it. No, it's not like I love... My man. Usually I'd help you out of sheer respect alone. But those bastards questioned me already, so uh, I can't move from this spot. Couldn't you make up an excuse to leave? Aren't you good at that? Yeah, I probably could, but I couldn't stay away for too long. Maybe I could slip out in disguise, but I thought I'd put them on high alert and make the investigation tougher. Then what should I do? There's another solution. I'll disguise you, so you can keep on investigating. You want me to keep investigating in disguise? Yeah, I'll give you a voice changer too. I'll leave this to you. But if this goes on for much longer, we'll both be in trouble. My disguises can't last forever. What? Really? It puts a huge strain on my body. I'm already starting to feel dizzy. Uh, are you okay? Not really. But I gotta do this. It's all to save the love of your life. I mean, this saying I love her is a bit extreme, but... Besides, I'm a master detective of the WDO. I've seen plenty of dangerous situations. So, who do you want to disguise as? Tell me. I want to disguise as Yoshiko. So, you want to be the star candidate of the theater club. She's known for being an honor student, right? So, you know all about her. Why do you think I wanted her on the school? Once I've seen the face, I never forget it. Just leave it to me. Pardon me. She said she's not feeling well. May I accompany her to the restroom? I'm sorry. We'll be back right away. Alright, that was perfect. I slipped a voice changer under your clothes, so be sure to use it. Oh, also, just a heads up, uh, touching your own boobs won't feel good or anything. I'm not gonna touch them! We'll see about that, perverted detective. I'm heading back now. Get going. Yoshiko is supposedly well-respected by everyone. I hope I can extract information from different theater members. I'd better be careful and avoid the real Yoshiko. I think Yoshiko is in the rest area, and Waruna's the makeup room. Kurune should be in the staff room. A perverted cross-dressing detective appears. The theater hall is currently closed off by Vice Director Martina of the Peacekeepers. All students who are at the scene are to remain in the lower level. You are to stay there as well.
pervert detectives roaming around. You're so oblivious, Master. And a creeper, too. You managed it well. Huh? What do you mean? You're getting good at playing dumb, too. <laughs> are you practicing for the peacekeepers? You really are the top actress after all. Are you talking about what just happened? You really want to say that so loudly? <laughs> Don't worry. I know how to keep a secret. She seems to believe Yoshiko is the culprit from the way she's talking. Is there something about Yoshiko that makes her think that? It's a club locker. Warren's name tag is on it. That isn't your locker, Yoshiko. Huh? Oh, you're right. Did you forget? We talked about this during the last meeting. Using someone else's makeup will lead to fights, so we aren't allowed to open other people's lockers. The situation is bad enough already, so please don't do anything that could start more fights. Right. Sorry. Do you have a moment? I want to talk about what happened. Um, Yoshiko? Hmm? What's wrong? I'm sorry. It's nothing. Excuse me. <sighs> she suddenly fell quiet. I guess I shouldn't question her anymore. She looked like she wanted to say something, but... Maybe it's something she can't say to Yoshiko. Maybe she'll talk if I'm disguised as someone else. It's a club locker. Cotton's name tag is on it. I probably shouldn't open the lockers of people I'm not disguised as. Something they don't want Yoshiko to hear? Yoshiko! Why did you leave me back there? I was so scared. Those peacekeepers kept harassing me. They're the worst. Um, you're... I watched from above the whole time. I saw Cotton die. Oh, I'm going to have nightmares about this. I'm so scared. Can we walk home together today? Please? Hey, if you were watching from above, does that mean you were with Kurane on the lights? I was. Why are you asking me this now? Then tell me, did Kurane do anything strange during the performance? Did she carry anything suspicious or do anything out of the ordinary? No. She was the same old unfriendly Kurane. She came to the catwalk before the performance and was there the whole time until the incident occurred. If she did anything out of the ordinary, I would have immediately noticed. Lighting requires perfect teamwork. Though, to be honest, it feels really suffocating to be around her. 
Oh, I wish you were on the lights instead, Yoshiko. Anyway, why do you ask? Oh, uh, no reason. So, Karine was just her usual self, huh? Yep. I never lie to you. Remember the Duel of Poisoned Cups part? Where they shuffled the cups? Could you see that part from above? Hmm? Yes, of course! Although the audience couldn't, I could see their hands moving from above. As part of the lighting crew, that was my most important scene, so it would have been a problem if I couldn't. Most important? Yoshko! You complimented me during the meeting about this, remember? It's the scene where we shine the spotlight on the glasses after shuffling. Oh, right. <laughs> that, uh, how is it supposed to go again? It's the presentation where we use two spotlights. Kurine puts the spotlight on one of the glasses first, then I immediately put another spotlight down. Were you not watching? Uh, I was. I just remembered. You did an excellent job with the lights. at all tonight. May we finally have that sleepover? There's something I need to do right now. Maybe another time. It's a club locker. Yoshiko's name tag is on it. I should open it and search inside. You're opening a young girl's locker? What you're doing is totally psycho. It's for the investigation. Give me a break. Yeah, whatever. I hope it doesn't turn into a hobby. The script and makeup items are neatly placed. Huh? There's a glass in the back. It's the same kind that was used for the play. What is this doing here? What else is there? Oh, there's a photo on the back of the door. It's a two-shot photo of Yoshiko and another girl wearing this school's uniform. Who is she? That's about it for the things of note in this locker. prepared it for our play today. Oh, um... Did I do that? Huh? Did you forget? We originally planned to use wine glasses, but their thin stems break so easily. So last time you bought four others, including the backups. Uh, oh! Right! Two backups were on the prop shelf, but... There's only one of them now. Oh, where could it have gone? Oh, speaking of, I want to ask if you're the one who set the glasses up on the stage. Yes, I was. 
Did you notice anything strange with the glasses at the time? No, they were spotless. We can't let anything happen to the glasses our actors use. I see. Thanks. Even if I... Um... You were in charge of... The costumes? You're acting like this is the first time we've met. Do you not remember me? Well, people call me the ghost member all the time. I'm here every day, but no one notices me. Well, at least I'm not as bad as Kurine. But she stands out a lot when she's on stage. Could it be she acts a certain way so she doesn't stand out on purpose? What do you think, Yoshiko? Uh, uh, I'm not so sure. <laughs> she's quiet. Maybe she's not on good terms with Yoshiko. It's just a water gun. There's a hole on top for adding water. That's the prop we used in our previous performance. You did a wonderful job. Thanks. I'm alone for a bit. Um, about what happened. How could you show your face here after murdering Cotton? Huh? You're not supposed to be here. Listen, the peacekeepers are everywhere. So stay away from me, got it? Murderers should just... Wait! Who are you calling a murderer? Enough! I have nothing to say to you! Shut up and get out of here! That was intense. I heard they were on bad terms, but maybe she's more on edge because of what happened? On top of that, Warana thinks Yoshiko is the killer. Maybe there's a reason why she thinks that. Should be enough. Oh, I think that's about all the information I can gather while disguised as Yoshiko. People treat Yoshiko exactly like it was reputed. Everyone around her seems to trust her. That being said, Warona and Kurone seem to think Yoshiko is the culprit. Do they think she poisoned a rival to eliminate the competition? But I don't see her as someone who could kill. There was no info tying her to the murder either. I think I need to disguise myself as another club member and gather more information. Getting addicted to drag, are you? I don't think you're about to win any races. Oh, what's wrong? You look pale. I'm sorry, but my student appears to be feeling rather anxious. How's the investigation going? 
Who do you want to disguise as next? I want to disguise as Waruna. Waruna, the other lead actress on stage. I kind of dig chicks who seem hard to get. Alrighty, time to turn you into just the kind of girl I like. So creepy. Perverts of a feather flock together. Perfect. In fact, I'd totally bang you right now. If you're okay with that. Hey, hold on! That's completely out of line! I'm a superstar detective! Social norms don't apply to me! I refuse to hold myself back. But we can save the fun for later. Go investigate. Warna is supposed to be feared by the other members. I hope I can still get some information from them. But I better make sure I don't run into the real Waruna. Uh, Yoshiko was in the rest area, Waruna the makeup room, and Kurane the staff room, right? She's ignoring me. I knew they weren't on good terms, but I didn't expect the seemingly friendly Yoshiko to act this way toward her. Still, I need to get her to talk, or I won't find any clues. Hey, Yoshiko. Why are you ignoring me? <sighs> You're the one who told me not to speak to you. Huh? I did? It's unlike you to act like this. Are you nervous? Anyway, stop talking to me. Go away. It's no use. Oh well. Hey, Waruna. You handled that poisoning scene with Cotton really well. Huh? I don't want to see you around here again. Was that a compliment about Warren's acting? No, there was some nuance. Like she indirectly accused Waruna of murdering Cotton. So Yoshiko believes Waruna killed Cotton during the duel of poisoned cups. I'm trying to blend into the wall as best I can right now. Don't talk to me. Um, it's about what happened. I didn't expect you to bring it up. <sighs> Fine. There is something bothering me about it anyway. What's that? I watched the glasses get shuffled while I was above set. Wasn't it slower than usual? Was it? Why did you go so slowly? Um, I was just doing what I usually do. Uh-huh. Doing it like that makes it super obvious what you were trying to do, you know. Huh? <sighs> Whatever. Does she suspect something? 
Kearney thinks Waruna took advantage of the duel of poisoned cups to kill Cotton? It's a club locker. Kearney's name tag is on it. Excuse me. That isn't your locker, is it, Waruna? Huh? Oh, you're right. We talked about this during our last meeting. Using someone else's makeup will lead to fights, so we aren't allowed to open other people's lockers. Waruna, even someone like you has to follow the rules. S sorry This locker has Waruna's name on it. It doesn't seem to be locked. Going through a high school girl's locker while claiming it's for an investigation is what a criminal would do. I'm not a criminal. I'm a detective. Well, a trainee. It's crammed with music and theater magazines. Huh? Is this a diary? But... It's locked. I can't open it. I don't see a key. Then again, I don't really want to peek into a diary. Let's put it back for now. I don't think there are any other clues. Terrifying. At this rate, I doubt I can talk to them. Hey, could we talk for a bit? <gasps> Warana! What's wrong? Um... around Waruna. Maybe I can push her a little to talk. You should tell me if you notice something. Otherwise, I might get upset. S sorry Um, there was one thing I noticed. What was it? It's about Yoshiko. I wonder if she wasn't feeling well. Huh? Why do you say that? I watched from the audience and noticed Yoshiko arrived to the theater hall late. Yeah, I saw that too. Yoshiko always watches from beginning to end, even for the rehearsal performances. I wonder what could have changed that. What did she do after arriving late? Well... She sat near the right edge of the front row before the blackout. She was still there after the lights came on. She didn't leave her seat once. She looked rather restless throughout the play. Right edge in the front row, and she looked restless. Talk right now? Oh, Warina! I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a bit busy right now. <laughs> it's no use. She won't talk to me. She seems really afraid of Warina. right now she's obviously afraid uh, 
Um... <sighs> She's ignoring me. Looks like they're not on good terms. Waruna, I'm cleaning that right now. You'll get dirty. Um, I'd appreciate it if you could leave that alone. Oh, got it. If we ran into each other, I should hide. Is she heading to the restroom? Ahem. This is just me talking aloud. But this may be an opportunity to slip into that makeup room. You might be right, but it'd be terrible if I'm caught. I'm just talking to myself again. But if you don't grow a pair, you'll never become a full-fledged detective. J shut up! I'm just considering my options. Hey, back already? Yeah. I forgot something. Uh, where was it? I'm grooming my... I'm scared. I can't believe I watched someone die. I wonder, where did Karen's soul go? The true culprit's soul is deep inside the mystery labyrinth. Only Kurane could do something this scary. Kurane? What makes you think it's her? Because I saw it. Kurane stole Karen's script when it was left in the wings. Huh? She ran off somewhere with the script. Isn't that suspicious? Kurane to Karen's script? What does it mean? Is there a secret involving her script? Varna! Please stay by my side today! I'm so scared I could die! Oh, uh, I'll think about it. That was such a shock, right? Who would have thought Cotton would die on stage? Even though I hated her, seeing her die right in front of me makes me regret badmouthing her. Yoshiko has to be the one who did it, don't you think? Yoshiko? What makes you think that? I thought you'd agree, Warna. Yoshiko is the only one who could do this. She's fanatical about Aiko, though she thinks nobody noticed. Aiko? That was Kurumi's close friend who committed suicide six months ago. Which reminds me, we snuck into the school to seek out the truth behind Aiko's death to begin with. Maybe this incident has something to do with her death as well. Yoshiko never shows her feelings, so who knows what she's thinking. But I'm sure Yoshiko hated Karen. Karen got to be the main lead ever since Aiko died, after all. Yoshiko resented her, which led to today. Well, how's that for some expert reasoning? Um, so is it true that Yoshiko adored Aiko? Are you kidding me? Everyone could tell. It was that obvious. Warna. You're really dense when it comes to these things. But, that's what makes you likable. Also, didn't you need to go to the restroom? I 
better get out of here. The real Warana might come back any second. Thanks for talking to me. Anyway, I need to go to the restroom. That was super quick, Warana. Huh? Oh, we almost ran into each other. That should be enough. I think that's all the info I could get is Warana. People are afraid of her, so they don't really talk to her. But Yoshiko and Kurone both seem to suspect Waruna. On the other hand, Waruna's group of friends suspect Yoshiko and Kurone. Everyone suspects each other. Maybe everyone was on edge even before today's incident. But there's still no information that could lead me to the culprit yet. I should disguise myself as another student to get more information. I'll head back to Desuhiko for now. Um, teacher, do you have a moment? Oh, what's wrong? Are you feeling unwell? Excuse me for a minute. This student doesn't seem to be feeling well. How's the investigation going? Who do you want to disguise as next? I want to disguise as Kurine. Can you do it? Kurine? Uh... Hold on. I'm reviewing my mental high school girl album right now. Oh, found her. She's the one everyone calls distinctive. I don't know how society sees her, but she's right on the border of my strike zone. Betty would be happy with just about anyone. He'd probably enjoy getting hit by a dead ball if the pitcher was a girl. Okay, let's start. up with the investigation. I'm getting way more tired than I expected. If I stop concentrating, my disguise will wear off. Alright, I'll make it quick, so please hold down the fort for just a bit longer. I'm counting on you. Kurini is often alone. I wonder if I can get any information from the others. Anyway, I better make sure I don't run into the real Kurine. Uh, Yoshiko is in the rest area, Waruna the makeup room, and Kurine the staff room, right? scared you. I want to talk about what happened. <laughs> Yoshiko? <laughs> she won't even look at me. Maybe she's still in shock from the incident? Or does she treat Kurine like this all the time? Hey, Yoshiko. Can we talk? Absolutely not. I will not speak to you. I told you it'd be this way. Huh? As I've said before, I refuse to even look at you. Please, go away. 
She really hates Kurine. Is there a reason why? I better leave for now. I almost ran into Kurine. But I need to check inside. I'll just wait for her to leave. refuses to speak to Kurine. Oh, hello, Kurine. Is something the matter? Huh, she's actually willing to talk. Maybe she's on good terms with Kurine. Oh, great timing. I was investigating what just happened. You mean to practice for a role? You did say you wish to play a detective someday. That's amazing, Kurine. You truly are a thespian. Right! So, there's something that's bothering me. W what is it? I just handle the costumes, but is there something you want to know about them? Maybe you think the actors on stage could have hidden poison in their costumes. No, sorry. That'd be impossible. Why do you say that? Because I reviewed both costumes in the wings right before the performance started. If they were carrying anything, I would have noticed then. But what about after you checked? Like if they'd gone to the restroom or somewhere else? Then I would check again. Besides, both of them were in the wings the whole time. Oh. Really? Though, they were performing the whole time, so I haven't checked their costumes since the play began. Well, if they were here the whole time, they couldn't go grab the poison. If that's the case, it would have been difficult for Warana or Cotton to bring poison on stage. By the way, Kurine, I still need to organize the costumes here. If you're free, could you help me out? It's hard to do it alone. Help organize the costumes? Wait, if I can use her to my advantage? Ah, <sighs> taking advantage of a high school girl. You've really hit rock bottom. Well, will you help me? I wanted to have a little chat with you, too. Well, I'll help out later. So can you grab me from the staff room? Later? When? Count to 100 in your head. I'll be done with what I need to do by then. All right. Well, I'll start counting now. One, two, three. I better leave right now. I counted to 100, Kurene! Huh? What? What's going on? Alright, good. I'd better check the staff room while I can. Let's 
take a break. It's a club locker. Warren's name tag is on it. Hey, that's not your locker, Kurene. Huh? Oh, you're right. We talked about it at an earlier meeting. You're not allowed to open lockers that aren't your own. People took makeup without permission, and fights broke out all the time. Please, follow the rules. S sorry It's a club locker. Cotton's name tag is on it. I probably shouldn't open the lockers of people I'm not disguised as. Two theater club members are whispering to each other. They haven't noticed me. Maybe this Kurine disguise has made me less conspicuous. So, who do you think killed Cotton? It has to be Warana, right? Totally! It's gotta be her! She can never read the room, you know? Like, she doesn't see the other members as people. We're all just stepping stones to her. She thinks she's the main protagonist or something. She basically treats everyone like side characters. I know what you mean. She wouldn't think twice about killing people. They're talking about Warna behind her back. The theater club really is on edge all the time. But even if Warna was the culprit, how did she get cut in to drink the poison? Well, it's gotta be at that one part. A part in the script where Warna gets closer to the shelf? Oh, right after the blackout! It's the scene where she gets the plate, right? She could have secretly snuck in some real poison and added it to the glass or wine bottle. That's it. Waruna is totally the culprit. The scene where Waruna approaches the shelf. I guess it is pretty suspicious. Could she have added the poison then? In the upside down glass on the shelf? for what you did. Uh, for what, again? You know, how you inspired me with the presentation on stage. Uh, uh, oh, for that one scene, right? You are such a good amnesiac. You have a knack for playing along with no memory. Yeah, the part with the overlapping spotlights after the glasses get shuffled. It expresses how the two characters' fates are intertwined. It was all thanks to you that we decided to go with this presentation. Kurene, why don't you take over stage direction for our next performance? Y yeah that might be a good idea. Just to confirm, I was the one who suggested the lighting presentation on the glasses? Yeah? What's wrong? You're acting kind of strange today. No, I'm not. Hey, do you have a minute? You can hear me, can't you? She's ignoring me. I guess she's not gonna talk. It's a club locker. 
Courtney's name tag is on it. It doesn't seem to be locked. This Kurene gal seems the type who'd booby trap her locker. like eye drops. There are so many of them though. Some for red eyes and for dry eyes. Is this something Karina usually uses? Doesn't seem like there's anything else of interest. I guess there's not much else we can find in the staff room. We'd better leave before Karina comes back. Up. Can you not touch anything? Oh, s sorry. Right, these two really don't get along. It's draining just pretending to be Kurene. I wonder if she's not affected by all this. That should be enough. That's all the information I can gather while disguised as Kurene. Kurene seems a bit eccentric. But she doesn't draw a lot of attention to herself. I was able to get some information thanks to that. Kurene was focused on production this time. She was thinking about the lights presentation. The lights were managed properly during the play. It doesn't seem like she had a chance to use any poison. I was able to gather more intel by disguising myself as those three, but... I still don't have any definitive evidence that proves who the culprit is. I won't get much further just thinking about it, so I should go to Desuhiko for now. Um, excuse me. Where's the teacher who was here earlier? Oh, she wasn't feeling well and went to the administrative office. The same teacher keeps going back to the restroom, too. Maybe it's food poisoning. I see. Thank you. The office? Why at a time like this? Did Desuhiko? What happened? Oh, it's you, Yuma. Sorry, I need a break. I started getting dizzy, so uh, I ran in here to get away from everyone. I try to retrieve my disguise tools, but I can't. I'm at my limit. I can't move. You're that fatigued? Yeah. Now that I think about it... This is the longest I've ever stayed in a disguise. Sorry for making you go through so much trouble. I don't worry about it, man. I got to lean on a girl's shoulder on the way here, so really, I should be thanking you. I got plenty of good sniffs in. The more he talks, the less likable he gets. So, how'd it go? 
Any trouble investigating? About that, I gathered some information, but I'm lacking something more definitive. Everyone has something suspicious about them, so I don't know who the culprit is yet. Speaking of which, the peacekeepers mentioned a past incident that happened at this school. A past incident? You know, the one with Kurumi's best friend six months ago? The girl who fell from the school's roof and died. The peacekeepers want to pin Kurumi with a murder motive for that incident. They're gonna twist the truth into something that's convenient for them. At this rate, Kurumi will... You'll save her, won't you, hero? I'm... no hero. But if they want to distort the truth, then as a detective, I can't let it slide. <laughs> and that's how you see it? And you're already a hero, Yuma? There's still time if you hurry. Go and seek the truth that hasn't reared its head yet. But how? The guy snooping around about the first incident is a chubby peacekeeper. Get information out of him and figure out what they're trying to suppress. They won't tell me so easily. Hold on. There is one way it could be possible. Halara's postcognition sure would have helped in investigating the previous case. But we can't leave the school now, so we can't ask Halara for help. I have to find another way. I see. So if I can disguise myself as the chubby peacekeeper... Hmm? You're gonna disguise yourself as the same person you want to talk to? Oh, right. I can't do that. I'll think of something else. That's it! I can get that information if I'm disguised as Martina, the Vice Director of the Peacekeepers. Looks like you now understand the power of disguises. Well then, let's get started. On second thought, sorry, I don't have any energy left to disguise you. Huh? I think I'll recover if I take a nap. What do I do? There's no time to wait for Desuhiko. I need to find Kurumi immediately. It'll be too late if I wait until the peacekeepers end their investigation. But I can't force Desuhiko to do a half-hearted disguise. It'd be way too dangerous with the peacekeepers. What am I supposed to do? Uh, aren't you forgetting about a certain ability? Oh, that's right! But what? But don't yell out of nowhere, the peacekeepers will find us! Hey, Desuhiko. Can you lend me a hand for a little while? It... lend a hand? Yeah, I just need you to hold my hand for a bit. Are you serious? But... right now, you're disguised like a girl. What if I start to have feelings? Now's not the time for jokes! Hurry, please! Jeez, what's going on? What is this weird feeling? Is this... Love? No! It's a long story, but it's the forte I gained in exchange for my memories. Just holding hands will allow me to use another person's forte. Are you serious? You actually have a forte? Let me borrow your disguise tools. How does it look? Wow! That's the perfect disguise! Did you really do this, Yuma? You never told me you had such an amazing power! 
I'm surprised there was a peacekeeper uniform in your bag. You're so well prepared, Desuhiko. Wait, but we're holding hands. How'd you put your arm through the sleeve? Anyway, the disguise is over, so we can let go now. You said a chubby peacekeeper was investigating the past incident? I'm going to go talk to him. And with that perfect disguise, there's so much more you can do. Right. You stay here and rest. I'll resume the investigation. You there. Do you have a moment? Vice Director Martina! Is it time for my punishment? Punishment? Anyway, were you the one investigating the Ico case half a year ago? Y yes! That's correct! Is it time for my punishment? I need to confirm a few things. Can you tell me what you've discovered so far? Aiko's <clears throat> body was discovered behind the school building in the flower bed after class. She was bleeding from an injury to her head. This is believed to be the cause of death. The body was not wearing shoes on either foot. The shoes were then discovered on the roof of the school building, set together neatly. This is why it was deemed a suicide via jumping off the roof. Uh, here is a photo from the scene. Who first discovered the body? Let's see. It was a student named Cotton, another theater club member. Huh? Cotton? She heard something fall and went to check the flower bed. There she discovered Aiko on the ground. That is what she testified. Aiko was considered the star of the theater club, but apparently she worried about her future goals. And by the way, this is the last photo of Aiko prior to her death. So this is Aiko. Thank you for the report. Continue your investigation. Yes, ma'am. Oh, but... What about my punishment? Um... Uh, be gone! <laughs> yes What's with the punishment thing? Anyway, I got what I came for. I should keep investigating. But where to go? Uh, hey, what are you doing? Cut it out! Why are you getting in the way of my investigation? Oh wait, the chemistry lab. 
Besides, where would she even get poison from? Ms. Martina, this was discovered in the chemistry lab. That's right. The bottle of poison used in the murder was found there. <laughs> well, I'm here anyway. Might as well check it out. If we use this... Vice Director! Was there something insufficient about our investigation? Had you told me, I would have verified myself. Thank you for your diligence. Tell me, do you have the results from testing for poison? Yes, as I've reported to you already. The poison was only found on the victim's glass. Only the victim's? What about the bottle or the other glass? None. No traces have been found on those. And, as you've instructed, this information is currently being kept from the official report. I see. Good work. The poison was only on Cotton's glass? How was that possible? Droppers used in the lab, but these still look new. Maybe. Wait, there's a paintbrush near the chemical shelf. The tip of the brush is wet. What is this? discovered by the peacekeepers that was used for the murder. They'd taken it out for the investigation. Did they put it back because they were done? The report mentioned the bottle's lid was unsealed. The bottle is too big to easily conceal. Taking this to the theater hall would attract attention. If that's the case, maybe its contents were poured into another container. According to the label on this bottle, this chemical will react to oxygen in open air, rendering it harmless 30 minutes after the bottle is unsealed. Oh, there's a more detailed description about it here. Once opened, oxidation cannot be stopped. Transferring to another sealed container will not prevent this process. There's probably not much else that can be checked in the chemistry lab. But it sure is convenient being disguised as Martina. The peacekeepers keep telling me everything. I should have taken this disguise from the start. Maybe I should keep investigating in this form. Hmm, what else should I look at? Uh, again? checked everything in there. No, I didn't check everything. There were lockers I haven't searched yet. Now that I'm disguised as Martina, I could look through everything. Uh... 
Kate's club locker. Cotton's name tag is on it. I have to open this for the investigation. Do you understand? Huh? I yes. Huh? There's something on the floor. It's the script for the play. Cotton's name is written on the cover. There are tons of handwritten notes. A lot of effort was clearly put into this. Hmm? There's something written in red at the Duel of Poisoned Cup scene. Take the glass the spotlight hits first. Cotton must have written this. The handwriting is the same as the rest. Interesting. Definitely looked away just now. Hmm. Do you have a moment? Are you the one who shoved Cotton's script into our locker? What are you talking about? I have an eyewitness account of you taking Cotton's script. <sighs> are you hiding something? If you keep hiding it, you'll be sorry later on. Don't tell me you're also hiding the chemical used in the murder. Uh, I'm not, I swear! She's definitely hiding something, but I don't think I can get anything out of her. You should pat her down and search her. Huh? A detective must suspect everything. You get to fondle a high school girl. Being the pervert you are, you'd be killing two birds with one stone. Hey, you. Check Corone's body to see if she's hiding something. Me? Wouldn't it be better for the peacekeepers to do their own investigation? But that would, uh... Cause some problems. Just do as I say. Uh, I'm on it. Oh, there's something in her pocket. Th that's a notebook. Is this a scrapbook? There are magazine and newspaper clippings in it, and all the articles are. Related to Aiko? On another page, there's a small clipping of an article about Aiko's suicide. Was she collecting everything there is about Aiko? Wait, is that...? <laughs> hey, where is she going? No, it's fine. Huh? R really? Locker. Warren's name tag is on it. I have to open this for the investigation. Do you understand? Huh? Uh, yes. Oh, right. This diary has a lock on it. I feel bad about reading someone's diary, but I need as many clues as I can get my hands on. You there. Can you call over the student named Waruna? Huh? Waruna? Sure. What do you want with me? Can you open this lock? That's my diary! How did you get that? That has nothing to do with what happened! Uh... I'll be the judge of that. It 
pains me to do this, but it might lead to a clue. I have no choice. Isn't this what a detective would do? There's no need for emotions to solve a case, right? I understand. Here's the key. I'll give it back right away. Don't worry. Oh, what's this photo? I see. Here, you can have it back. That's enough investigating in this form. I should revert to my normal self. It'll get increasingly harder to investigate like this. Forcibly exposing secrets isn't an investigation. It's just coercion. <sighs> You're such a naive softy. All right, let's go back to Desuhiko. Another elegant and highly intelligent beauty. What a surprise. Although it appears you were unable to copy what is in my head. Put your hands up! You must be the suspicious person wandering around the crime scene. I received word of you lurking about, and here we are. Who are you? What do I do? At this rate, both of us will be captured. Looks like you gotta surrender. And that's what you get for getting carried away. Although, if you apologize to me sincerely, I just might... Help! Somebody! What? What are you screaming for? W what are you... Imposter is right here! She's carrying a weapon! Hold on! That's the imposter! Huh? What? This teacher and I will evacuate the premises! Eliminate that threat at once! Hey! Now what do we do? I didn't think that far ahead! Let's, uh, go this way. That's enough! As I suspected, you can't copy what's in my head after all. Now reveal your true identity, otherwise you will be shot. What's going on? Huh? Why is our teacher... Unless... If there are two of the same peacekeeper? What is happening? 
Yuma? Yoshiko, Waruna, Kurane, Kurumi too. I was so close. I almost figured out who the true culprit is. Now hurry it up. I won't give you a countdown before I pull the trigger. Wait! wait. I'll do as you say. You lot. I see. Detectives from the Nocturnal Detective Agency. <laughs> In that case, you can both be disposed of right here and now. Wh what? Damn. I've got no choice. <laughs> What are you doing? Get out of here, Yuma! Yes, he go! Have you gone mad? Do you realize what happened no. You will regret this in hell. Shinigami, please help me! If I have to! without thinking. He didn't even get on his knees or anything! Um, well... Thanks, Shinigami. You saved me. Don't mention it. I'm compelled to help when people need me. Straggler in here. <laughs> Who are you? <sighs> More importantly, where do you live? What are your hobbies? What do you think of me? Oh, would you look at that? We have a perfect
Calm down, Desahiko. This place is a mystery labyrinth. Huh? A mystery what? Oh, let me explain for a bit. And that's everything. Were you listening, Desuhiko? Hmm? Yeah, I was just doing some appraising. Appraising? Yuma, this babe is totally top tier. Where'd you meet a hottie like her? There's never a shortage of girls when you're around. You're the best wingman ever. Master, this munchkin is an eyesore. You mind if I boom kill him now? No, you can't. Master, is that how it is between you two? Oh, you're making me jealous. I just explained everything to you, but you weren't paying attention. Hey, let's hurry up and do... you know... What does that mean? Is it something... not family friendly? Master, are you ready to give your life for the truth? Yes, I am. I, I feel like I just discovered a whole new kink. Hey, Yuma, me next, yeah? Let's swap places. Sorry, but that's not possible. Shinigami's powers can only be used by whoever made a pact with her. A pact? This goes even deeper than I thought! I explained that earlier, too. Anyway, next up is materializing the solution key. <sighs> Here you go, Master. She's perfect. I'm in love. Really? All right, I've made up my mind. I have no idea what this mystery labyrinth thing is. Before we get out of here, I'll get you to fall in love with me. Hmm. If you decapitate yourself, then I would consider it. That can be easily arranged. No, it can't. Now, let's set off to unriddle this mystery labyrinth. Our target is the culprit who preys on the truth. Right. This is the beginning of our battle for love. Jeez, I hope this works out. So, this is the mystery labyrinth. Oh, talk about creepy. Hey. Why don't we just head back and grab something sweet? I prefer corpses and mysteries over sweets. What? Hey! What? Hold on, wait for me! Don't leave me behind! By the way, Yuma, there's something I gotta ask. 
I don't remember how I got here. <laughs> Is it because I'm in love? It's not love, it's the mystery labyrinth. When an outsider enters the mystery labyrinth, their memories are sealed away. This isn't gonna mess up my brain, is it? Am I gonna be all right? What difference does it make? Your brain is already messed up. Anyway, are we at the exit yet? We just got here. Oh, if only there was a brave, strong boy around. I would swap my master for him in a heartbeat. Huh? You can do that? All right! <laughs> now I'm getting pumped up! Oh, well, off he goes. I wonder if he'll be okay. <laughs> Who cares? He's just gonna slow us down anyway. Oh, he's back. <laughs> We've got trouble, Yuma. There's something up ahead. Was it a cue? Did it look like a tiny creature? No, it's a witch. A witch is about to execute somebody. Uh, execute? Mysterious. <laughs> You're going to warn it to stop running away? Seriously? It's a mystery phantom. They're mysteries given form that try to block us from reaching the truth. They appear in the form of someone interfering with the investigation. Now that you mention it, that witch kind of looks like the peacekeeper Martina. She's the one hiding the truth? What is she doing over there? I shall now commence the execution. All criminals must be purified by the holy fire of darkness. Kurumi? Fan service? Nice! So she's pinning the crime on the flat-chested Ago, then killing her to cover up the truth. This is terrible. We have to save her. Relax. This is the mystery labyrinth, remember? That's not actually her. But still, I can't leave her like this. You dare intervene in this execution? Anyone who defies the peacekeepers will suffer the same fate! Shady statements slip by. You're in the way. You're a detective. How foolish. Get in my way, and you'll be executed. You dare defy me? It's clear who the culprit is. My claim doesn't hold up! <laughs> Ugh, 
clear? That's impossible! You don't have any evidence! You're a fool to the five peacekeepers. Very well. Allow me to educate you. The truth is already apparent. The culprit must be Kurumi. Prior to the performance, she switched the wine with the juice. At that moment, she mixed in the poison to commit the crime. Now slash through this mystery. <laughs> the toxicity of the poison used in this crime is neutralized 30 minutes after being exposed to open air. But Karumi switched out the wine before the performance began, meaning more than 30 minutes had passed. So even if Karumi had mixed in the poison, by the time the incident occurred, it would have been completely neutralized. Which means Karumi isn't the culprit! defeated the monster! Alrighty! I'll save Kurumi. Leave it to me! Hey, wait! It's all right now. Hey, aren't you getting kind of cold? I'll warm you right up. Ah! It's the victim! Got him! I am the culprit who killed me. The truth is, this was a suicide. I put in the poison myself. I killed myself. I'm so sorry! <laughs> I'm sorry too! No, it wasn't a suicide. I won't let her take the blame just to end this investigation. stage was just another prop. It was empty. There was no poison in it. As a matter of fact, the vial was dry. There definitely weren't any signs of it being used. So it's impossible to commit suicide using that vial. Did you get it? Really dodged the bullet there. I was about to make my move. You shouldn't approach women in the mystery labyrinth. This isn't the real world. I didn't expect you of all people to warn me about ladies. This mystery labyrinth is terrifying. to have been a suicide. 
Even if the vial wasn't used, she still could have drank the poison herself. But the only thing Cotton drank from on stage was the shuffled glass. Even if Cotton added in the poison, there's no guarantee she'd be the one to drink it herself. It's not how someone who wanted to die would go about it. Gotcha. I don't remember the play, so I didn't know it got shuffled. Hang on. Wouldn't the same be true for the culprit? If the glasses on stage were switched around, there's no guarantee the victim will take the poison one, right? Oh, uh, maybe the killer wasn't aiming at Karen specifically, but just wanted either actress to die. Hmm, I can't completely rule that out. Well, that's gotta be it. I'm a genius, even without my memories. What do you think, Shinigami? You, uh, wanna dump your master from me? Hmm, I'm not sure. Can you escort me all the way through this mystery labyrinth? Yeah, of course. I'll grab a taxi or whatever to take you. Jeez. What the? Turn on the lights! this place? It looks like the school. And there are three doors? Looks like it's up to me. There it is again. Done it. What? You're a master detective and you don't know? Don't tell me you're a how done it virgin! Ew, gross! Oh, wait, I, I, I know what this is. I, I was just testing Yuma since he's a trainee. Well, Yuma, did you figure it out? It's about how the crime was done, right? Yep, and once we solve all three hows for the crime, the final route, the conclusion of the who done it, should appear. And who done it is about the culprit's identity. If we figure out how the poison was applied, it'll identify the culprit. Nice, you sure know your stuff. So, which way should we go? have to explore all of them, so I'll let you pick the order, Master. I suggest we start with whatever route has the easiest answers, so we can solve it quickly. You want to go with how was the poison glass chosen? Was mega creepy. Is there somewhere we can take a break? Rest wherever you want. In fact, you can rest for all of eternity. Anyway, how did the culprit get the victim to choose the glass with poison in it? The glasses were mixed around on stage, after all. Um, would you mind telling me the sequence of events that happened when the glasses were shuffled? It's no fair otherwise. I don't know about being fair, but here's exactly what happened. The Duel of Poisoned Cup scene began around 45 minutes into the performance. 
At the start, the victim, Cotton, brought the glasses and bottle from the shelf that's on the set. Cotton then took out the poison vial from her pocket and poured it into one of the glasses. But the vial was just a prop. It didn't have any real poison in it. After that, the glasses were shuffled. Whoa! What's going on here? It's not like we're trying to find the Lost Ark or something. It, it's all right. We can keep going by solving mysteries. Right. Now concentrate. on stage who took turns shuffling the glasses were Maruna and Cotton. This must be it! The first person to choose a glass was Cotton. placed her mouth on a glass, but she didn't die. Which means only the glass Cotton chose contains poison. Th this way! <sighs> I thought I was done for. Yeah, yeah, quit being lazy and get a move on. Are you sure that only the glass Cotton took had poison in it? Isn't it possible both of them were poisoned? Warana drank from the other glass and didn't die. That has to mean only Cotton's glass had the poison. Then how did the culprit get Cotton to pick the glass with the poison? Well, maybe the culprit wasn't after Cotton specifically. They didn't care who wound up drinking the poison. I'm not sure about that. I think Cotton absolutely was the target. Totally my type. Oh, my heart. I am in love. Let me tell the truth. The culprit is Warana. Seriously? Thanks for telling us. You're so gullible. She's obviously lying. You're serious? That was a lie? It's no lie. Waruna knew which glass was poisoned. Either the glass with the poison was filled just a bit higher up, or she marked the right glass beforehand. Knowing that, Waruna prompted Cotton to select the glass which contained poison. Prompted her? How? Only the two of them were on stage. She could guide Cotton through the scene. Before or after each line of dialogue, she could have easily signaled her with gestures or glances. Yeah, that checks out. I don't think she's saying anything super questionable. The glass? Could this be? Get it? We have to pick the right one. I'm counting on you, Yuma. Right. Why? Don't you believe me? Why? 
Why doesn't anyone believe me? Oh, wait, don't cry. I'm completely helpless against the woman's tears. Yeah, yeah. But Karin filled the glasses. Warna wouldn't have been able to tell which one had poison just by the amount of liquid. Well, how about marking the glass itself? No. The prop master testified that there wasn't a single mark on either glass. No, they were spotless. We can't let anything happen to the glasses our actors use. Uh, no, oh, really? I'm surprised you investigated that much. <laughs> Are you sure you're a rookie, Yuma? It was all thanks to your forte. So it's thanks to me. <laughs> I knew it. <gasps> I didn't lie! <laughs> no one believes me. Everyone else is lying! <laughs> Why won't you believe me? The mystery labyrinth is a reflection of the real world, right? Then maybe what she's crying about is... A reflection of the real world. Then she must have grown up surrounded by a bunch of scumbags. That's it. I'll warm her up with my charisma once we're back in the real world. That is exactly what a scumbag would say. Anyway, the two glasses got shuffled, right? So the odds were 50-50. Maybe she just relied on luck. If she hit her target, perfect. If not, who cares? I doubt it. But it's impossible to get the victim to pick a specific glass after shuffling them. Man, why did the culprit even do this? It's way too much trouble to pull off a murder in the middle of a performance. It. Maybe there's a reason why it had to be done during the play. Huh? What do you mean? The culprit had to make the victim choose the poison glass on stage for some reason. If that's the case, there could be a trick involving the stage itself. Now we gotta prove how the poison glass was picked. You got this, Yuma? Yeah, I'll do my best. The culprit used the spotlight to get caught in to select the poisoned glass. The spotlight? How? The culprit told Cotton to take whichever glass the spotlight hit first. As a matter of fact, Cotton's script had a note written in her own handwriting. It said, take the glass the spotlight hits first. The table was directly under the catwalk with the spotlight. So from here, you could see how the shuffling was done. If you know that much, then it's pretty much solved. It can't be me! 
It's not me! <laughs> it's not me! Someone who managed the lighting during the performance indicated the poison glass to Cotton. Kurane, she was in charge of the lights on the catwalk. I knew it was you! Whoa, what's going on? I always thought you were gloomy and creepy, but I didn't think you'd actually murder someone. On top of that, you used the sacred props from our play! I knew you'd murder someone one of these days! Why didn't you take responsibility and just die? Everything would be better if you just disappeared! I, I didn't do it! I'm not the culprit! It's not supposed to be like this! Why can't everyone be nice to me? after 30 minutes, but the murder occurred 45 minutes into the play. In other words, the poison had to have been poured into the glass after the play began. But Kurine was up in the catwalk even before the play started. She was up there the whole time, too. If that's the case, it's impossible for Kurine to have poured the poison. <laughs> Wait, what's going on? Kurane isn't the culprit? Didn't you say Kurane used the spotlight to get Karen to pick the poison glass? Yes, but she couldn't have poured the poison into the glass herself, which means she can't be the culprit. So that means the culprit is... keeps going, so let's think about it as we go. That sword sure is sharp, Yuma. Can you cut through anything with it? The solution blade is effective on anything inside the Mystery Labyrinth. Anger Master, and he'll cut you in half. <laughs> Don't do it, Yuma! You and I are pals, aren't we? My man! <laughs> I'd never do anything like that. Yeah, I know that. I, I just had a gut reaction to what she said, you know? Uh, we could have threatened him into becoming Master's loyal slave. going on here? It's a dead end. Hmm. Doesn't seem like there's a hidden question here. This really is a true dead end. A true dead end? It means you can't reach the truth just by answering how was the poison glass chosen. 
Then it was all a waste of time? Well, they should have at least left us a treasure chest or something. Hey, Yuma, it's your fault for picking this route. What? Well, reaching a dead end is expected inside a dungeon. Think of it as stamping out one possibility and move on. Oh, totally! You are always right, Shinigami. You change your tune awful quick. For now, let's head back to where the roots change. Time for a convenient magical spell! and rushing. Let's take it nice and slow. Who wants a break? We can't do that. There's a time limit to solving the mystery labyrinth. Time limit? What happens when it runs out? Well, your soul leaves your body and you're trapped wandering the mystery labyrinth forever. In the end, your soul will be absorbed into the mystery labyrinth and you disappear. In other words, you die. Yuma, come on! We gotta get out of here! Yeah, I know. Master, which route do you want to take next? Want to take the how is the poison mixed into the glass root? And don't blame me if you die. So, we're gonna solve the mystery of how was the poison mixed into the glass. Actually, I was thinking about that. Maybe it's wrong to think the poison was in the glass itself. Yeah, the peacekeeper said the same thing. Poison was only found on the victim's glass. Oh, right. If that's the case, it narrows down the possibilities for how by a lot. But don't let your guard down. Unriddling a mystery labyrinth is never so simple. glasses on the shelf an hour before the performance began. This is real bad, Yuma. We got more boulders coming at us. Come on, concentrate, concentrate. There's another door, Master. It's this door. The poison is effective for 30 minutes. The duel of poison's cup scene occurred 45 minutes into the play. Which means the only way the poison could be used was during the performance. I... I think... we made it through. There's no time to slack off. We gotta keep going. So the poison trick was actually set up during the performance. The poison is effective for 30 minutes, but the duel of poison's cup scene occurred 45 minutes into the play. Which means the only way the poison could be used was during the performance. But that glass was on stage the whole time, wasn't it? 
true. The set was fixed an hour before the play, and the glasses were already set on the shelf by then. So the culprit slipped the poison in while everyone was watching. Them. The culprit is Varna! There is no other explanation. It has to be her. Why me? Stop making such baseless accusations! Both Yoshiko and Kurane blame Warana? Stop it! I hate to see girls fighting each other! The only person who could have added poison to the glass was whoever was also on stage. So that means it has to be Warana. She's the culprit. No, 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 no! Murderer. Murderer. was upside down on the shelf. Even if she did use a water gun, there's no way she could have done it since the glass was upside down. <laughs> Women are really tough. I'm not the culprit. It's you! Did it. What's your reasoning? Uh, okay, fine. I'll tell you why Kurane is the culprit. There's no doubt Kurane is the culprit. She killed in a way only she could have. Kurane was on the catwalk. 
the poison into the glass! Using an eyedropper! Kerning used an eyedropper to add the poison! She did it from the catwalk above! She tricked the poison right in! This is the truth! Person on the catwalk. Another member was working the lights. She claimed Kurine didn't do anything suspicious during the performance. Because of that testimony, it's impossible Kurine added the poison from the catwalk. So it's proven that both Yoshiko and Kurine couldn't have added the poison to the glass. Waruna really is the culprit. She's the one who slept in the poison. I thought you were better than that, Waruna. I thought you would compete with your performance fair and square. I always knew something was off about her. Oh, it's not me. It really isn't me. Liar. Liar. Liar, 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 liar! on her person. The costumer confirmed it. So it was impossible for Warana to have brought the poison with her on stage. <laughs> Aw, they're all gone now. Wait, so Warana wasn't the culprit? Does that mean she didn't add the poison to the glass? It's a fact that she didn't bring the poison on stage. So naturally, she couldn't have poisoned the glass. Well, but then... What really happened here? I'm so confused. Let's think about it and keep going. What if I use my disguise to get new information out of the three of them? 
It's no use. I already did that during the investigation. Oh, you did, huh? But your disguise ability is incredible. It's like I was a completely different person. Makeup is one thing, but my voice and stature match too. I use a voice changer to synthesize a new voice. If I've heard it even once, I can easily set it up. I use tape to make your body appear thinner, or add padding for the opposite effect. Height can be adjusted by messing with your joints. Up to a certain point. But there are limits, given how it strains the body. The more you explain it, the more it sounds like you could commit a lot of crimes pretty easily. If I'm being honest, I must resist my urges every single day. It's a daily battle to tame the monster inside me. Desuhiko, that sounds more weird than cool. Go? I'm pissed about this path being blocked, so I try to just ignore it. Damn, it didn't work. Hmm, it doesn't seem like a question is gonna appear. Looks like it's a completely dead end. I guess we can't reach the truth by answering how was the poison mixed into the glass. So this whole route was a waste? We did eliminate one of the possibilities. Sometimes the journey is just as important as the destination. The journey. I like the sound of that. I'll use that for lyrics in my next song. Anyway, let's use my convenient magic spell to return to where you select roots. Over. Which route do you want to pick? How was the poison brought to the theater hall? You sure about that? So. Our goal here is to answer the question, how was the poison brought to the theater hall? Speaking of, where did the poison used in the murder come from? The chemistry lab in the school. It's a highly toxic experimental chemical. Why not just take it from the chem lab and keep it hidden in your clothes or something? The chemical's bottle was huge, so it's difficult to carry around in secret. Must have swapped the containers and brought it to the theater. That's gotta be it. in the chemistry lab. The culprit used it to carry out the poisoning. They took the poison out of the lab by applying it with the brush. Come on, concentrate, concentrate! This way! The missing glass could be brought to the theater hall without drawing suspicion. The culprit poisoned the glass and brought it to the theater hall. This way! The 
culprit replaced the poison glass with the prop glass. I was going to have a heart attack. We're not done yet. It's just getting started. At least we now know how the poison was brought in. The culprit used a paintbrush from the chemistry lab and directly applied the chemical onto the backup glass. Yeah, if it's the same kind of glass as the prop on stage, it could be brought into the theater without suspicion. The chemical is only lethal for 30 minutes, right? Even if it was prepared before the performance, it takes about 45 minutes before the Duel of Poison Cup scene. That's way too late! Right, so how about that, Yuma? Hang on. There is one person who could have brought the poison in before it expired. Supposed to pick the right one here, yeah? Can you do it, Yuma? Yeah, you can count on me. I was in the audience the whole time! There's no way I could have done that! I couldn't do it from the stage! I was in the audience the whole time! Yoshiko, it was you, wasn't it? What? Um, me? The only way to use a poison with a 30-minute expiration, 45 minutes into a play, is to bring it during the performance. But Warna was acting on stage the whole time, and Kurane was managing the lights on the catwalk. But Yoshiko... You were working backstage, so you were the only one who could move about freely. In fact, you arrived late to the theater hall after the performance had already begun. You were about 15 minutes late, which is 30 minutes before the Duel of Poisoned Cups. Just enough time for the poison to be lethal. So it was you. You brought the poison and got caught in to drink it. No, it's not me! Hey, she ran away! Yuma, after her! Where'd she go? As a production assistant, Yoshiko always had a bag with her. In it, she carried the glass with poison brushed on. The glass would be small enough to fit in the bag, and even if someone saw it, she could say it's just a prop. I see. So she prepared for the murder while in her role as a production assistant. But you know what? It doesn't feel right chasing after a girl like this. Seriously? I didn't do 
for it! You think crying will save you? Oh, well, you're right. You're so cute. Hey, come here. Knock it off, Desuhiko! It's all good. With my kind of charisma, I can make anyone a fan. She might even lead us all the way to our goal. Why do you always get all the attention, Yoshiko? You're such an ass-kissing bimbo. Were you jealous when Karen took your spot? Is that why you killed her? Way too mean. Even if she is the culprit, I'm sure she has a heartbreaking reason why. I didn't do it! I'm not the culprit! I'll be direct with you. The hypocrite Yoshiko is the culprit! Only you could have brought the poison. Only Yoshiko! No, no, no! I'm not the culprit! Yoshiko took the poison glass. And switched out the glass on the shelf! Secretly in the dark! This is the truth! When Yoshiko returned to the theater hall, she sat at the right edge in the front row for the rest of the show. She would have had to move from the audience onto the stage to reach the shelf and swap glasses. But that's impossible. The lights were only out for five seconds. Even if she ran over, someone would have heard her footsteps. So Yoshiko couldn't have been the one who swapped the glasses during the performance. Yoshiko wasn't the culprit? She did bring the poison from the chem lab into the theater though, right? The method was already explained. But still, she's not the culprit? Uh, I... If she couldn't have swapped the glasses on the shelf, she can't be the one who committed the crime. Let's keep going for now. There may be more ahead. This is making me scared of women. <gasps> I wish Shinigami would comfort me. Oh, but I'm committed to Master. Oh, damn it! I should give up my memories and sign a pact with the Death God, too, then. Quick, Yuma! Punch me in the back of the head as hard as possible! Let's not. Try, it's always a dead end. Are you sure that's the case? What if there is something that makes the wall collapse? Hmm, doesn't seem like it. Nothing can be done here. 
So this doesn't lead to who it is, even if we solve how was the poison brought to the theater hall? Seems that way. And we should turn back for now. With my magic, we'll be there in a snap. about it. Wasn't that the third route? What's going on? They're all dead ends! What does it mean, Shinigami? It seems that even though we tried to solve every how, we can't figure out who the culprit is. Oh, come on! Well, then what was the point of our great adventure? I've told you this a dozen times already. Even dead ends are precious clues. Because of them, you figured out that examining the murder method won't lead you to the culprit. I see. So we're still making progress. <sighs> Great work, Shinigami. <laughs> anyway, we have to view this case from a different perspective. What's that? I suppose that's your different perspective. Whoa. We're really walking on another side. We keep moving, then... all the fun why are you jealous of this the question is why did this happen I guess we're on the why done it route wait did white done what now it's about the reason why the case occurred meaning this is the route where we seek the motive looks like we need to focus on figuring out the culprit's motive from here yeah, I know cases always deal with motive, but wouldn't it have been better to start with this route from the get-go? Well, we only know this route is important because we cleared out the how routes. That's how it goes when it comes to solving mysteries and dungeons. Oh, but sorry, I, I guess that's how it is. <laughs> You're absolutely right, Shinigami. Let's keep going for now. Before we figure out the culprit's motive, what kind of person was caught in anyway? Was she cute? Yes, but more importantly, she was next in line to be star of the theater club. She was considered to be the best actress among the club's current members. So the culprit was envious as she was so popular. They killed Karen so they could become the star instead. No, I don't think it's that simple. Hey, who are you calling simple? Six months ago, the leading member of the theater club also died in a separate case. Top actresses dying one after another? Is their club cursed or something? The name of the student who died was Aiko. Her death was ruled a suicide by jumping off the school, but Kurumi doubted that was the case. Kurumi, huh? She's alright. 
All right. Anyway, I doubt it's a coincidence for people to die in such quick succession. This case may have been triggered by Aiko's death. So if we find the truth behind Aiko's death, maybe we can figure out the motive in this case. The truth behind Aiko's death. Hey, look! Is that Aiko? Whoa, she's cute too! Let's go talk to her! She's about to get a taste of my full and undivided attention. You can already tell women will be his downfall. Oh well, it's not like you're any better off with yours truly, Master. Kiko? behind her death. murder is the flower bed this is the answer the brick with Iko's blood on it had a very unnatural splatter pattern after the culprit hit her with the brick they returned it to its original position Death was not a suicide by jumping, and Cotton clearly lied in her testimony. Cotton killed Aiko! All right, let's keep following her, Yuma. I can tell Aiko's death wasn't a suicide from the evidence photos. Her shoes were neatly placed on the roof, but there was dirt on them that looked like it came from a flower bed. I think Aiko was told to meet at the flowers behind the school building and then murdered there. So the shoes were taken to the roof afterwards. The murder weapon is likely a brick from the flower bed. The brick with Aiko's blood on it had a very unnatural splatter pattern. If she fell from above and hit her head, the blood stain wouldn't get cut off in that way. I'm sure that after the culprit hit her with the brick, they returned it to its original position. But do you have evidence that Karen did it? If Aiko didn't die from jumping, Karen's testimony makes her highly suspicious. She said she heard something fall, and went to inspect it. I get it. Hearing a sound that never happened means she's obviously lying. Karen lied. And the reason why she lied? She made it appear like Aiko jumped. If that's the case, then the one who killed Aiko is Karen.
she disappeared? Damn it! I can't even help the girl who needs it most! Help her? She was dead long before you could help her. Anyway, this must be the roof I could supposedly jump from. Uh, hey. Why did Karen kill Aiko? I thought an all-girls school would be more sunshine and rainbows than... murder. If a brick was used as the murder weapon, then it could have been an impulsive crime. So Karen might not have been planning to kill Aiko when she called her there. You mean they were talking and it turned into a crime of passion? That's so cliche. Maybe they were discussing their acting careers. They had a disagreement, and it turned to violence. Well, if this caused the other murder case, then is the motive... revenge? Yeah, they weren't fighting over Aiko's spot. They wanted to get back at Karin for taking it away. Meaning... the culprit is whoever cares the most about Aiko? Then, which of the suspects is it? In fact, where do we even go from here? We got the motive, but there's still no path. This is different from the other dead ends. I think there's a mystery around here. Something must be hidden here. For? We're so high up. When did this happen? Master, look over there. What's that? It doesn't seem connected to anything else. Which means that could be the Who location. So the true culprit is over there then? But how do we reach it? It's not connected to any other route. What, are you freezing up? Scared of heights or something? Oh, it's not that. Uh, about those three routes. A pen? You carry that around with you all the time? Of course! Who knows when I'll be asked for my autograph? Done! Isn't it perfect? I'm just as good at drawing maps as I am at remembering a pretty face. This is the how route when seen from above, right? What about it? Well, this is a dungeon, right? So maybe there's some secret paths in here. Secret paths? See? If you look at it this way, doesn't it all seem like the same road? You're right! The three how routes are connected into a single route all the way to the Who Room. Wait, all three are connected? That's it! I think I've got it! That's the hidden truth behind the how route! There's only one explanation for how the victim could have been poisoned. What? Seriously? Not bad. You finally made yourself useful. <laughs> Yay! Shinigami complimented me! I love you, Shinigami! Wasn't I a good boy? I deserve a treat, right? If you think you've got this, I'll back you up. Lay it all out.
right. Accomplices. The truth of this case is that Yoshiko, Warona, and Kurane were all accomplices and committed this crime together. Accomplices? But don't they hate each other's guts? It's the truth. I realized it once you drew this map, Desuhiko. The three Hau routes that we explored were all dead ends. Each of them were suspects, but they were all ruled out because of certain details of the case. That makes sense. If we look at them separately, we get dead ends. But by connecting all three routes like this, and looking at it as a single criminal act, it clearly becomes one path forward. They were accomplices that committed a single crime. This murder would have been impossible to commit alone. We figured that out during the How route. But if the three of them worked together, they could make it possible. What's this? I guess we're supposed to break the wall? Sounds like fun! I'm in! It's all thanks to my help, don't you think? And don't you forget it! You're the one who's going to forget it. Anyway, let's check it out. We have to make sure we're on the right track. By separating the house, the three of them divided up the tasks that needed to be done to pull off the murder. Don't you think so, Yuma? Yeah, I think it's the only way. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you sure sound confident. And now, there's a new problem to solve. We have to expose the secret behind their complicity. How exactly they cooperated together and the timeline of the crime. G got it. The timeline, huh? Then the first thing to discuss is... Poison brought to the theater hall. You sure about that? Let's start with the poison being brought to the theater hall. Their conspiring began with how was the poison brought to the theater hall. It's a route we already explored to the very end, so let's blast through it! Hey, wait! The person who could have brought the poison to the theater hall was... Yoshiko, right? Yeah, the poison neutralizes after 30 minutes, so it had to be brought into the theater during the show. As the production assistant, only Yoshiko could have done it. Looking back, the reason they chose poison as the murder weapon was to establish an alibi. The poison was only active for 30 minutes, which gave the other girls an alibi. Yoshiko went to the lab for the poison as soon as the performance began. She had the extra glass hidden in her bag, and after she brushed poison onto it, she put it back in her bag and returned to her seat in the front row as if nothing happened. The problem is, what happened next? Yeah.
Isn't this the how was the poison mixed into the glass roots? Wow! They're really connected! Alright! Let's keep going and reach the truth! Whoa! Again? Hey, you said Yoshiko handed the poison glass over to Waruna, but... Waruna was performing on stage, right? How could she receive the glass while on stage? The only time I can think of is when they turned off the lights. <laughs> Yoshiko sat on the right edge of the front row close to the wings, where the actors enter and exit from scenes. She probably stood up when the lights went out and left the poisoned glass near the right wing. Even if she couldn't get on stage, she could at least do that within five seconds. Then, Warna picked up the glass and hid it under her costume. The costume check happened before the performance, so she got around that by receiving the cup during the performance. So they passed the baton during the five seconds the lights were out. The two of them must have rehearsed it as much as the rest of the play. But what happened after that? Suppose Waruna did get the poison glass. How did she swap it with the real glass while the play was still ongoing? A few moments after the blackout, there's a scene where Waruna approaches the shelf. It only lasts two or three seconds, but Warren's hands in the shelf are completely hidden from the audience. At that moment, Warren could have switched out the original glass with the poisoned one. So they used the play itself for their seemingly impossible crime. <laughs> Talk about guts. This is something only thespians could pull off. Gummy. <laughs> Isn't there a safer way down? Master, hurry up and break this one down too! Right. Got this one too. Only a bit more. Let's keep going. W wait, can we take a break? This is the final one. It's the how was the poison glass chosen? It. From here, it's exactly as we solved it before. Kurunen told Cotton beforehand to take the glass the spotlight picks first. And then, after confirming the poisoned glass from the catwalk above, the spotlight was pointed directly at it. And that's the method behind the murder weapon. Method? Sounds more like madness if you ask me. <laughs> that solves this mystery. We've almost reached the truth. Seriously? That's terrible. Huh? Why? Because I haven't gotten Shinigami to fall for me yet! That's not gonna happen, even if you stay here for a hundred years. In fact, I basically hate your pets. You know, beyond the hate, there could be love. It's kind of like traveling the globe. You and I can go in opposite directions, but eventually, we'll meet. That's a stretch. Ugh. I feel sick. This is the last wall. Master, are you ready? Let's solve this thing! Right.
Yes! It fell! And behind that door is the Who Room. We finally made it. It's time to end this, Master. Looks like all the culprits are here, but there. Why do they look so sad? How boring! You call yourselves the final bosses of the Mystery Labyrinth? Then start acting like it! Might as well guard the truth till the end at this point! <laughs> <laughs> Probably isn't true. Uh huh? Oh, what do you mean by that? If you put together the three photos they each have. What? So they're all in the same picture? That's the truth.
Look at the case! This is just a guess, but you three weren't actually on bad terms with each other, were you? In fact, it was all an act to get revenge for Aiko. You all cherished the same picture with her. It was originally a single photo of you all together, with Aiko in the middle. You were all close friends. And when... You connect the pictures together. Everyone is there, smiling. So... why? Come on, we've got work to do before you get all sappy. Let's go! One more push and we'll be done with this labyrinth! <sighs> What would a hero do? A real defender of justice would defeat evil here and now and be done with it. But I'm no hero. All I want is the truth. And the truth is right here. So why go any further? Will solving this mystery really make anyone happy? Master? Do you sympathize with them? That's not something a detective should do. Your job is to solve mysteries, isn't it? If so, you have to expose the truth. You have to prove it in a way anyone can understand and anyone can see. Detectives aren't defenders of justice, they're defenders of truth. Defenders of truth. A detective must never overlook a mystery. Any and all truths must be exposed. A detective must always prioritize solving a case. Emotions must be discarded to reach a perfect solution through a perfect deduction. It's easier said than done. Yuma, if you can't do it, I can take your place. No. I'll do it. I'll take responsibility. I'll see this through.
Step right up! Step right up! A tragedy that struck an Academy stage! The death of a high school girl casting a shadow over four bickering theater club members! Truth bombs are about to be dropped! Time for the deduction denouement! This case begins with Aiko's death six months ago. Aiko was thought to have committed suicide by jumping off the roof. When Truth caught and murdered her. The shoes left on the roof had dirt on them from the flower bed at the crime scene. The blood stains on the bricks were also unnatural. And it was obvious that an amateur had faked it. If it wasn't a suicide, it would contradict Cotton's testimony. However, she didn't originally intend to kill Aiko. It was a crime of passion. So they got into an argument. Cotton saw red, then boom? Women are so scary. Yoshiko, Waruna, and Kurane probably realized the truth behind what happened. The three teamed up to avenge Aiko. They used the dress rehearsal to commit this crime. Regardless of the reason, getting together to plan a murder is pretty crazy. Yoshiko in the audience was to bring the poisoned glass into the theater hall. Once unsealed, the poison is harmless after 30 minutes. So, she went to the lab 15 minutes after the play began. The poison container is too big to transport unnoticed. So she applied it to the glass in her bag with a paintbrush. Thus, the poison glass was created! She brought it back to the theater hall, then went on standby at the right end of the front row. Warna, who was acting on stage, was to switch out the poisoned glass. During the five-second blackout 30 minutes into the play, Yoshiko placed the poisoned glass in the wings. Warana, on a stage, retrieved it and hid it under her costume. Then, in the scene where she approaches the shelf, she exchanged the glass there with the poison one. Switching in the murder weapon on stage while everyone is watching? What a pervy exhibitionist! What's perverted about that? And Kurene, on the lights, would guide Karen to take the poisoned glass. Then came the duel of poison cups! The two glasses on the shelf had juice poured into them. Cotton and Warren shuffled them in a way the audience couldn't see. But Kurene, who was on the catwalk directly above the stage, saw exactly which glass held the poison. She confirmed the location of the poisoned glass and shone the spotlight on it first. Cotton drank from that glass 45 minutes after the start of the play. Winner, winner! Poisoning complete! That was so long! Good job! Kurene told Cotton of a change in stage direction, where the victim was to take the glass the spotlight hits first. Cotton followed this instruction to take the poisoned one. The whole sequence of events for this crime would have been impossible for a single person. Their cooperation was also a means to conceal their involvement. But I can't shake the feeling that there was some other reason behind it. The ruthless, disgusting criminals who conducted this murder are... Yoshiko! Warana! Kurame! You are the killers! Wait, what? They may have pretended to always be at odds with one another, but deep down, they were bonded through their shared admiration for Aiko.
is my answer. Was there really no other way? Was there no way to prove Cotton did this without killing her? That's not possible. Not in Kanai Ward. The Peacekeepers bend the truth whichever way they want to. The three girls couldn't get justice from them. Which led to this crime. But that... it doesn't make it right! How long did you put on an act for this? Aiko... was our sunlight. Wherever she went, we were meant to be there with her. She was... everything to us. We were together ever since we were young. Her dream was our dream. We were nothing special. But she called us her rivals. Those words encouraged us to carry on. Now she's gone. Everything's hopeless now. The three of us investigated Aiko's death. I used my parents' connections to view top secret case files. But no matter what we did, the peacekeepers refused to reopen the case. Because Karen's father is a big shot at Amaterasu Corporation. That's why we had to do it ourselves. We wanted revenge. Revenge became everything for us. And to get it, we pretended to fight amongst ourselves. We are actors, after all. But we don't have to anymore, right? We don't have to keep this up. We put on quite a show. Didn't we, Aiko? <laughs> this leaves a bad taste in my mouth. Then again, most cases do. But that's the end. We can finally return to the real world. I hope the girls open up like that in the real world, too. No. I don't think they can. Huh? Why is that? Oh, also! <laughs> where's Shinigami? I'm right here. Well, what do you think? Did you fall in love with me? I know you did. You must have, yeah? I already told you, I will never fall for you. You're seriously getting on my nerves. You're annoying and exhausting. Uh, Desuhiko? <laughs> Did you think I was serious? I was... Just testing the bond between you two. <laughs> a bond? It's more like a curse, at least to me. Uh, right. I was just testing. I, I wasn't serious at all. I didn't get rejected, okay? I didn't. Uh, all right, just calm down. Anyway, let's do it. Time to exterminate the souls of the true culprits and destroy the mystery labyrinth. Wait, Shinigami, do we really have to do this? I mean, they... They're murderers. The reason why doesn't matter. 
enjoying reaping the souls of criminals. Because I'm Shinigami! Surging bloodlust. Overflowing despair. The brilliant soul of Shinigami. Excuse me, everyone. The culprits behind this incident were Waruna, Kurne, and myself. All three of us conspired to poison Cotton. Uh, the way we got her to ingest the poison was... What you people have done. But next time it won't go your way. Remember that. Did you see that? <laughs> she was staring at me the whole time. She's gotta be in love with me. Oh, fine. I guess she can keep the peace of my love as well. <sighs> What's got you so down? All three of them just died out of nowhere. Nobody's to blame for that. There's no reason for either of us to feel guilty. Seems like all the memories from the Mystery Labyrinth are completely gone. Master, we're in the clear. All three of their deaths won't be your fault now. That's not what I'm worried about. Rumi? Thank you for saving me. I knew you'd come to the rescue. <sighs> anyway, are you all right? The peacekeepers didn't harm you, did they? No, I'm fine. Hey, Yuma? I don't want to get in the way of this tearful reunion. <laughs> But uh, maybe we should get out of here? It'll be trouble if the peacekeepers come back. Oh, right. Let's leave then.
want to head to the agency and put in a good word for you. I don't really get how it all ended, but I have a hunch. Yuma, you did all the work, right? <laughs> He's got good intuition. <laughs> Looks like I won't be calling you rookie from here on out. Let's keep working together, my man. Mind your manners as you walk your girl home. was solved, three lives were lost. Right. I didn't expect Yoshiko and the others to... <sighs> um, could it be that their deaths are related to your forte? What? Wow, we've got another sharp one. Master, I hope you know this, but if you say anything about our contract... Oh, sorry for saying something so strange. I know I'm off, right? Even if that were the case, you'd never tell me. <sighs> hey, Kurumi, there's somewhere I want to go. Will you come with me? Sure, I guess. He had a place like this. Please help me save this city. Save this city, huh? I managed to save Kurumi by solving the case. But I killed those three girls. I'm responsible for their demise. If I had let the peacekeepers deal with it, at least their deaths could have been prevented. What exactly did I even solve? It's not a true solution if we can't save everyone. What I gained in exchange for my memories isn't some convenient, mystery-solving tool. It's literally the power of a death god. What are you musing about? You can't reclaim the past, and you're not gonna get your memories back either. In the end, you just have to accept it. Accept it? Instead of believing in some vague thing like justice, just believe in the truth. They say there's only one truth, and there's only one type of person who can find their way to that truth. Detectives. Even if I have to sacrifice others to find it, I should let so many people die for the truth? Master, you keep going to extremes. It's part of why you're a greenhorn. Uh, seems like you still have much to learn under my guidance. What is the truth? Why did I become a detective to seek it? You? Huh? Oh. Yes? I know I already said this, but... Thank you so much. 
You are exactly the kind of person I thought you were. What do you mean by that? You're my hero. I'm no hero. I was just trying to expose the truth. But thanks to you, I was saved. If you weren't around, I wouldn't be here today. That's why a detective who exposes the truth is a hero in my book. If there were more detectives like you in this city, maybe Aiko's death would have been solved earlier. I'm sure things would have been different. <sighs> Kane Ward hasn't seen a hero like you in forever. That's why it's always been so dark here. So please... Please continue to be our hero. A hero? Maybe before I lost my memories, I was trying to become someone's hero. This time, there was a steep price to be paid for exposing the truth. But even so, the truth must always be revealed. I want to believe I can save someone. I want to continue being the hero she says I am. Still, I don't want to use Shinigami's powers again. <laughs> don't act like you don't like it, Master! Well, I'm just glad you seem more motivated now. Oh, yeah. We made a promise, didn't we? I said I'd tell you about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret after the case was solved. Huh? Uh, oh, right. Hey, you seem like you weren't expecting much. But that's where you're wrong. Just between you and me, I am Kanai Ward's only informant. Informant? Are you serious? A high school girl informant? I'm still a beginner, though. I started three years ago after taking over from my grandfather. And now that the peacekeepers control the city, there isn't much of a demand for information anymore. No wonder you know so much about rumors. Besides... I haven't felt this nervous since I was chased by those peacekeepers. That also explains why the peacekeepers were after you. <laughs> if Kurumi is an informant, maybe she does have some crucial information about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret. So, Kurumi... What do you know about Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? Well, it's likely connected to the top secret research that Amaterasu Corporation is conducting. I think it has something to do with why the unified government approved of Kanai Ward's isolation. Top secret research? Approved the isolation? Kanai Ward has always been a city centered around Amaterasu. But there was a lot more freedom in the past. People were allowed to come and go as they pleased. It became an autonomous zone, free from the Yuji's influence only a few years ago. The reason behind it has to do with the top secret research that Amaterasu is conducting. But what is the research? I don't know all the details. But it's supposed to be able to change the entire structure of the world. All nations and enterprises worldwide want it. This research is what turned Amaterasu into a major global corporation. And that research is being done in Kanai Ward? I think so. It would explain why Kanai Ward's been isolated. It's so their research doesn't leak out research that can change the world. If that's true, it's some serious stuff. No wonder number one of the WDO would risk his neck here. Do you know any more details about that research? I do know a little bit. 
Grandpa risked his life to obtain one piece of confidential information about Amaterasu Corp. And I believe that somehow, it has to be related. What do you mean? Research to create a homunculus. An immortal monster. Homunculus? Immortal monster? Now, wait just a minute. Are you serious? I don't have any proof. But it's a fact that Amaterasu Corporation has previously researched homunculi. Homunculi? Being researched in this city? Is that Kanai Ward's ultimate secret? Immortal monsters? Homunculi? It's turned into a fantasy story out of nowhere! Oh, I'm sure not one to talk. <laughs> That's all I know. Well, is my information useful to you? Although, most of it was left behind by my grandpa. Left behind? One day, my grandpa just vanished. He's been missing ever since. That's why I decided to take over where Grandpa left off as an informant. So, do you think what I've shared might help? Yeah. This is huge, considering how I had nothing until now. Really? That's great! I'm actually useful to a master detective! Oh, um, about that master detective thing. Look! That's where my grandpa used to live! <sighs> that takes me back. I wish I could see him again. <sighs> oh well. And that's how you'll keep taking advantage of a high school girl, huh? By the way, Kurumi, why do you think your grandfather disappeared? Could it be the peacekeepers? No, I don't think the Peacekeepers have anything to do with it. Grandpa vanished before Kana Ward became isolated. He was just suddenly gone. But I do believe I'll see him again someday. Master, forget about some geezer you don't even know. What about this homunculus stuff? The homunculus research. Amaterasu Corporation is still researching some immortal monster in Kanai Ward. It makes sense why there'd be such tight security. They fear the secret leaking to the outside world. Maybe it even has something to do with the great global mystery that Number One mentioned. Speaking of which, what could the great global mystery be anyway? There's too much stuff we don't know. You're one step ahead of the other detectives now, yeah? Guess that flat-chested uggo is kinda useful. Maybe I should stop calling her uggo now. I'll just call her flat. Still gonna hold on to that, huh? I guess this is technically an improvement. You're gonna keep this info to yourself, right? It'll help you get ahead of the other master detectives. No, I'll report this to everyone. This isn't something I can deal with alone. Ugh, how lame. Couldn't you strike a pose and shout something like, I'm coming for you, Amaterasu! That's not my role. All I can do is investigate Kanai Ward's ultimate secret just a little bit further. The rest should be left to the real master detectives to handle. <laughs> this is my fault as your mentor for babying you so much! You've become the kind of detective who only relies on others without trying to solve problems yourself! W what's wrong with relying on others? for today. 
The pleasure is all mine. <sighs> I'm kind of hungry. Maybe I should go buy a meat bun on the way home. You like those meat buns too, huh? Yes, I love them. I eat at least one every two days. They're kind of the comfort food of Kane Ward. It's like I'm instinctively drawn to them. Oh, would you like to join me, Yuma? No thanks, I'll pass. I see. Um... Will we... meet again? Huh? Yeah, of course. If you ever need any information, you can count on me. See you later. Uh, I hope she's okay on her own. I couldn't bring myself to say, I'll walk you home. Just say it. What are you, 12? Are you sure you don't want to go back to the agency? Weren't you running an errand a while ago? You're right! Oh no! I better hurry back! research. I still can't believe it's true. Does it ring a bell, Chief? Unfortunately, I've never even heard of it. You sure it's not just some rumor? The way Kurumi explained it leads me to think it's true. Regardless, there's too little information. We lack anything definite at the moment. Still, it's better than having nothing at all. Well done, Yuma. Thank you. You're like a dog wagging its tail whenever you get complimented. You were late getting back, but I never imagined you'd get yourself into another mess. Ugh, what the hell is going on? Ugh, I'm so angry, I'm talking with the left! I'm really sorry. And your tail gets tucked between your legs whenever you get yelled at. Setting aside how I nearly died of hunger and that Yuma needs to be put on a leash. You picked another fight with the Peacekeepers! That's the biggest problem here! We weren't picking a fight. Besides, we got to expose the truth in the end. That look on Martina's face was awesome! Right, Yuma? That's not what I'm talking about! How can you be so relaxed? There, there, Lisp Man. Please remain calm. So, is it true the culprits in that case suddenly died? That makes it similar to what happened in the Mailman case. Moreover, it is also similar in that those involved in each case, like Desuhiko and myself, had their memories wiped. There are too many common traits to call it a coincidence. Uh, um, <sighs> the memories related to the case disappear. <laughs> Perhaps it is due to someone's forte. Uh, uh. No way. What kind of useless forte would that be? Besides, no one here has an ability like that. Could another master detective have found their way here? It'd be one thing if we were anywhere else in the world, but we're in Kanai Ward. This isn't the kind of place some ambitious master detective could barge into by himself. If someone got officially dispatched here, I would know. 
anyway, why are you all looking so glum? The case is closed and we got new information. It's a fantastic step forward. It's springtime and all is right in the world. Spring? It rains all year long here. And we've had nothing but trouble. Ugh! Just what the hell is going on here? It's like the hand of death itself. <gasps> What's wrong, Vivia? You know what they say. The greater the detective, the more often they encounter death. Isn't that right, Yuma? Uh... That does kind of apply to you, Yuma. In a way, you're like a death detective. Uh, don't take it the wrong way. I mean that as a compliment. But even if it offends you, I refuse to apologize. Apologizing is too much of a hassle. The Death Detective! You have a cool nickname, Yuma! No way! I don't want a nickname like that! Really? But it sounds so awesome! It seems Death has taken a liking to you, Yuma. That's one of your talents, in a way. Never understand this guy. I'll figure out how to discipline Yuma later. For now, we need to come up with a plan to handle the peacekeepers. You said this case involved Vice Director Martina, right? She's Director Yomi's right hand woman. I heard she's both his close advisor and his mistress. I'm sure they're gonna make a move somehow. I don't even want to think about it. What will they do? See? This is what I'm talking about! Everyone, brace yourselves! Are you serious? <laughs> this is so fun! Agency is sinking. Where is everyone? Somebody help. Hey, Master, snap out of it. Come on. Kaboom! Oh, <laughs> it sank, all right! <laughs> this is the bolt of judgment, the fire of purification, a supernova explosion! Hey! Who prepared that torpedo? Unfortunately, it was I, Martina Electro. Ah, uh, I figured it was you. That wasn't enough firepower! I told you to blow up the whole river and vaporize them, didn't I? Now it just looks like I'm causing chaos! Half-assed executions of the law are nothing but senseless violence! I told you to demonstrate perfect order! Listen to me. A clean and pure execution of the law is... Overwhelming. Absolute! And completely blows everything away without a trace! I'm terribly sorry, Director Yomi. No matter. You are my beloved right hand. You only need to remain by my side. Yes, thank you. I will forever be by your side to serve you. Thing is, even though you're my beloved right hand, you still need to be punished. Huh? You couldn't even solve a case caused by a couple of brats, not to mention the detectives escaped under your watch. 
But it's all right. Don't worry, you are my beloved right hand. I won't hurt you. I need you to stay pretty for me forever. I... I understand. So, what is my punishment? See this? It's a recent invention by Amaterasu Corporation called a High Performance Presser. It can compress up to 50 kilograms of material and instantly turn it into a cube. Even humans can be turned into pretty little cubes. Huh? I'll keep you on my person at all times, so you'll always be by my side. You are my beloved right hand. Please wait! What? You, you must be joking! Hey, you! Take my beloved right hand over there. Director Yomi, please wait! Please! Have mercy! Oh, Martina. There's something I wanted to ask you before you go. What's... love? <laughs> Take her away. Now, let's go find the corpses of those detectives that got blown up. Good day, sir. Not. You don't know? I guess not, since you're still new. That's number one, the leader of the World Detective Organization. That's him? I have no idea. Why would someone that high up be here underground? There's a book vault here. It's a secret book vault that only number one can enter with his biometrics. It supposedly contains data from generations of great detectives, sealed books, and so on. <gasps> Didn't know that. Don't even think about going in there, newbie. I, I know. Hmm. Was it number one carrying an old book just now? I wonder what that book was. Curious? Well, how about you go investigate? You may be a trainee, but you're still a detective. Investigate? Me? <laughs> Kidding. Don't take it so seriously, Yuma. Wait, where am I? Beats the hell out of me. But weren't you by my side the whole time? Don't you know what happened to us? Like that time back at the Amaterasu Express. I was only able to stay awake back then because we just made the pact and we weren't fully synchronized yet. But that didn't work this time. When you lose consciousness, my vision also goes dark. Actually, do you remember drifting in the river after the explosion? You almost died. Hell, even as a death god, I thought I was gonna die. <laughs> this is no laughing matter. Anyway, because your biological activity stabilized, I was also able to wake up. Everything's A-OK -okay so far. 
Let's go find out where we are. I want to go exploring so bad my eyes are watering. That's a bit dramatic. Where are we? Let's check things out for now. Oh, wow. Who's there? Hi there. Nice to meet you. I sure look suspicious, huh? 